so you guys have um been assigned um, this is the se second of three tasks that Gafna has given you uh, she's do she gave you these tasks to, to uh, help help you um, because you guys need her help in finding Sirana which is this red wizard who has who's going to be able to get you into the doom vault where you ultimately are looking for this phylactery of the um, High Regent, Zaztam, the ruler of Thay, which is your mission here. And in order to get Sirana's trust, you've been helping her out with her rebellion. Now, Sirana, you guys have discovered over uh, after you've successfully helped her that she actually plans to assassinate the Tharkion of Eltabar. His name is Almond Halakari, uh, uh, Halarkun. And she, you don't know the details of this assassination attempt, but you do know that um, one of her agents has been captured, and if he talks, uh, if they torture him enough and they force him to uh, spill his guts, then <clears throat> the Pro Probity Corps was going to learn about this assassination. So it's imperative that you go there, you either rescue him or make sure that he doesn't talk you know, one way or another. So she gave you the plans to the Property Corp Black site, and you guys have uh, kind of sculpted out from the out from the outside, which it looks like a, a, just an old abandoned brothel, but you know that on the inside they've kind of uh, gutted it out and turned it into a, a headquarters. So in order to get inside, you guys have, uh, uh, you guys observed some of the uh, guards walking out. Uh, you use a disguise to turn into uh, the image of one of the guards, and that got you in the doors. However, the minute you got in, um, you started speaking, and your voice did not sound like the guard that you uh, copied his image. So the once you get in, once you got inside, you are, a pro you are kind of approached by this person over here. She appears to be... She appears to be like a secretary. Uh, this is the receptionist. Uh, d when she asked you for credentials... Uh, you started speaking to her, which kind of uh, raised the alarm. There are, there are four guards, kind of sitting there, and they're they're kind of getting they're getting more interested, and they're they're looking over. So uh, I think the only person that's in there right now is Naris, who's uh, who's altered, correct? No, no, Tiny's with me. I got him oh, by that's right. I'm sorry. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, you got Tiny on a chain because uh, Tiny, you're pretending to be like an, uh, an escaped slave. Yep. Uh, so, so this uh, receptionist, Analik, she says, I'd better call the Inquisitor. I, I don't know why you're sounding like the way you're sounding. And she motions for one of the guards to go upstairs. Uh, a, f a few, uh, like a minute or two later, you guys are kind of s uh, standing there looking at each other in, you know, very tense silence. A moment or two later, uh, you hear footsteps on the stairs behind you as the Inquisitor uh, comes down. So this woman shows up, and as uh, as she comes down, she just barely gives the two of you any notice. She looks like she's very distracted. And uh, wh when she comes down, she says, what is it? And uh, Nalik, the receptionist, says, Inquisitor Halleck. Uh, we, we we have um I, I have a we have a situation here, and she uh she looks around at the uh, four guards to make sure that they are at the ready, and she says, 
Uh, I I believe that uh, we are we are under the influence of duplicitous magic, and there is somebody who does not claim to be who he is. So the Inquisitor kind of just um she 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 looks a little bit bored, and she just stares at the two of you, and she she says, "Well, she says, what's the situation?" And uh, Nalex says, "Well." And she points at you, Naris. Um, you're pretending to be what was it? What was his name? I forgot his name. I don't remember either. <laughs> dumb, dumb, or something. <laughs> yeah. She says, where, she where says that name is. this. Uh, this young. Uh, this. Uh, this. This guard yeah. over here had just left, uh, coming off of his shift. Um, and we uh, we had seen him leave, but then he returned. And what? And when he returned, he said that he had a prisoner with him, appears to be an escaped slave. But once he got inside, it was cl he's clearly not himself. He spoke, and his voice is very different. I believe we are under the influence of illusion magic. And then, um, and then, uh, the Inquisitor looks really angry. She's like, she, she's like. She's like, am, am I to believe that security is so loose that somebody that easily infiltrated our compound? And while this is happening, um, of course, uh, the other two, uh, the Dolrak and Tolan, you guys are outside and you're still watching, right? Yeah. yeah. So while you're watching, you um, you see something really troublesome because that 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 guard that Neris used his um. His uh, used uh, that Neris is uh impersonating. You see him coming back. <laughs> you see him coming uh, coming around the corner. Uh, it looks like he's going back to uh this uh, the the black site. This could be a problem. Uh, Can I speak? Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, sure, okay. absolutely. All right, okay. So I hold my hands up. Um, I still have Tiny, uh, Tiny's leash, and I say, "All right, all right." I said, uh, "I say, uh, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you," and I, I dismiss the illusion. No, no. Before you do that, Tiny Marble Cakes is going to speak up, and okay. Well, I haven't been doing so good so far. So go ahead. And she's like, <laughs> and she's like, uh, I can't, well, I can't hear you. Yeah, right. uh, you, you, with a sudden change in your pitch, uh, I think Discord all will right. block your voice. Uh, all right, I'll try to figure something out. I'll say, um, Tiny Marble Cakes will just say, Can you hear me no. now? No, uh, no, you cut out. No, no, the, the uh, you can still use it. Talk like her, but just use your regular voice. Uh, another, right. another thing you can do is, uh, you know, the noise suppression on the Discord. Yeah, Turn that to... off when you speak in Chinese voice. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, let's disengage that. Meow, meow. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But if you keep that off, it, it, you'll start noising up. So I think you gotta toggle it. All right. So tiny marble cakes will just be like. It's not his. No. No, it's you still, 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 still yeah. cut off. Alright, I'll have to figure something else out then. Um, I guess for now... You can yeah. also, if you look at your, um, uh, on the Discord, uh, if you look at your, your username, when there's no, nothing being transmitted, that thing won't light up. So you know that you're not, it's not connecting. Okay. After meow meow, you always cut off for some reason. Yeah. Try taking this fuzzy off my mic. Yeah. It, well, no. If you turn off all the suppression and all that stuff, then um, it will transmit. But um, unfortunately, if you do, the, some of those uh, things are hidden in the menus. Like if you if you take if you disable all the echo cancellation transmission, all that stuff, every sound will come through. But if you do that, it, it might also cause your mic to start doing interference. They want me to change my username. I got to do that at some point. Um, oh yeah, they did do that a while back. Oh, you don't have to. Every sound video. Let's but see. Do I don't even remember if I did. I don't think I did. Maybe I should try. What is this? What is this the headphone volume. Oh, I wonder. 
Hmm. Wonder if it has something to do with the mic. Uh, it could be a variety of things. It could be a hardware problem, software problem. Maybe if I switch it to a different setting, maybe on the mic. Oh, those settings. I don't know if they'll make a difference. What the what those settings do is they they change the um, they change the uh, the area where the mic is sensitive to. So one of the settings makes the mic sensitive to everything around it. The setting with that looks like a heart is the best one. That makes the mic sensitive to what's directly in front of it, but also gives the most clarity. But those other settings... What if you put like, the mic closer to your mouth? Yeah, that, that, I don't know, that could make a difference, but it has to, it has to do with a, with a pitch. Because if you're right, talking... I gave, I gave the mic a little more gain. So I'm, I'm probably coming out louder because of that. Yeah, yeah. I just hope I'm not, I'm not clipping or anything. doesn't because i saw that my thing didn't light up on discord well, i heard you say meow meow <laughs> all right let's see um <laughs> my goodness i end up role playing a character that we start having technical difficulties with <laughs> <laughs> well we always have technical difficulties with um, Tiny try, high pitch, uh, try try not to talk in that high of a pitch. Maybe lower the pitch a little bit. That might improve things. Yeah, I mean, maybe you went through puberty, so you got a deeper voice. <laughs> you know, my, my character, my char in game, my character is female, but I know. But I said you can still have a little bit deeper voice when you go through puberty for a female. It doesn't matter. We know who you are. <laughs> Let's see what other options are there. Built-in microphone. I'm, I have the, the Yeti, and let's see what other settings are there. Um, automatic. Oh, automatic determine input sensitivity. Let's disengage that. Yeah, that that might fix fix the problem, but it might also cause the problem of a lot of uh, noise later on when you're not doing it. All right, let's try. Like that kind of oh. meow meow coming through meow meow. Yeah, actually, I can hear you now, but I'm kind of worried that you might start uh, start uh, putting out random noise if you do all those oh, settings. I turn noise suppression back on. Let's see. Meow meow. Oh, so I turned the noise suppression back on, and. What I did was I disabled. What did I disable? I disabled the the input sensitivity. Yeah, maybe that's like a that's like a a noise gate where a, it gates off a certain pitch. That's a common microphone kind of um setting to clean up microphones because most people don't have two different you know pitches on their microphone. All right, so. All right, so I I turned the noise suppression back on, but disabled the input sensitivity. Okay. All right. It sounds it, it, I heard that before, so it's sounding better. All right, let's All try right. it. Meow meow. Well, that meow, part. Meow. Yeah, I can hear that. Meow, clear the meow meow. It's better. I can hear it. How clear is it? Uh, uh, it's fair. Okay. It's fair. It's not clipping anymore. Plus, it might be you're talking a little fast. Yeah, it's you're not clipping anymore. You were before you were just clipping out. Yeah. Hmm. What if I dial back the gain a pinch on the mic? Yeah. Meow meow. Yeah, meow, you, meow. Yeah, you saw. Sound, <laughs> sound, yeah, let's try it now. Let's try it now. <laughs> Maybe it's fixed. Okay, let's see what this does. All right, so so tiny marble cakes will 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 say. It's it's not meow meow. He was just bringing me here so that meow owner can pick meow meow up meow meow. But when on the way here, meow meow tried to prank to. Meow cast a minor illusion cantrip to make his voice different, meow meow, just to, just to, just, 
Just because Meow Meow thought it'd be funny, Meow Meow. Okay, um, that actually, I, I got that, actually. Um, yeah, I, I heard that. So, mm -hmm. so, um, kind of Serena Halig, um, you're talking to, so the High Inquisitor kind of looks at you and she, 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 she narrows her eyebrows. Uh, and and and, and she she says uh, says what why are you you are calling me down for this uh, you need to roll a deception okay and I'm gonna burn an inspiration to give myself advantage hey can I uh, uh, um, silent cast guidance guidance is not a silent spell it's gonna be obvious if you cast guidance I mean. I got. Oh, oh, you, oh know, you mean you mean use your use your use your uh, sorcerer spe ability? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that if you want to burn a sorcerer point. I'll do that. Let's see, I gotta find guidance now. It's been so long. Guidance, okay. Doesn't matter which one of my users two things effect. Uh, self. you have, obvious, obviously you want to use the one that's not on self, so you want to apply right, the one that's right. for, for Okay. Her. Okay, Tiny. See if this works. Alright, cool. And I've got advantage because I'm burning an inspiration. Deception. Ah, here it is. Alright. In the tower. Inspiration plus guidance. So you sound, uh, you sound very, uh, the, the Inquisitor looks like she's very convinced and she kind of looks the two of you over. She says, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm conducting very important business. Don't bother me over this trash. And she just turns around and marches right up the stairs. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside, um, uh, the, the original guard that you copied, he is about to go into the black site unless the, uh, you two intervene. <laughs> Uh, well, he can't. He's not able to see us. No, you guys. So you I, guys were kind of like um hi, uh, hiding around the corner originally, but you've been keeping your eye on the on the entrance. And okay, I just see... grabbed a big rock about a about the size of a tennis ball, <laughs> and yeah. I threw it, and I was able to hit him in the back. Okay. And he didn't see where it came from, but now he's going to come look look for it. So you see what happened. See so who did it. Um, so you you chuck a rock at him. He says, eh, "Oi, the hell was that?" <laughs> um, he, he kind of he looks around, and, and um, and, and he can't, obviously if he does, does it, are you are you visible when he comes <laughs> looks over at you? Yeah, or, he can't see us. But in the meantime, Tolan threw another rock at another direction and made noise to give the illusion that we're across the way. So he, he doesn't know where we're at. All right, so he turns around and, start, and, and starts uh, kind of examining the area of where the rock came from. He seems uh, he seems fairly distracted. But after after a minute or two, if he, since he doesn't see anybody, uh, he just kind of he just kind of shrugs and uh, he, he he looks like he's heading back towards the entrance. I whistled. We know his name, I believe. <clears throat> Yeah, you, I, you you actually don't know his name because um, when you uh, approach the door, that's when they said his name. I forgot his name, but you know we're assuming we know his name. Yeah, we probably didn't know his name because John just made up some names when they come out. That I don't think we would have had a way to know what their names were. Unless... I, I, I thought when we showed up to the area, we we yeah met with one of the agents, and the agent kind of informed us of like who's uh, coming in and out. Yeah, the life. agent gave you a name. Uh, not the same name as this guy. Oh. So he he comes over to investigate the whistling. You guys are kind of around the corner. We're just in like plain clothes. Uh, you mean you don't have your armor or nothing on? Well, I mean, we have an arm on, but it just looks like, you know, any, anybody else that would be around us. You know what I mean? Nothing special. 
Well, you, do, you guys, uh, besides standing out as some foreigners, um, you guys, you know, there, there's plenty of people, uh, different types of uh, people all over uh, Eltabar. So it's not like you're, you're standing out that much, but you do look like foreigners. And eventually the guy comes around the corner and, and, and he, uh, he looks at the two of you. He, he says, Oi, you see you through this rock? And he, took, he takes out a no. rock. <laughs> and uh, in what a you... drunkish voice, I'm like, uh, I was, you know, back to the rock. I just, we just been sent over here. Uh, you uh, want to go have a pint? What? Who are who are ye? I just, I'm a nobody. I'm just dull rack. We're, 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 we're guys offering you a drink. Come on. What, what do you mean, who are we? This guy's offering a drink. We're looking for friends and we're finding this place very interesting. Okay, uh, you can roll a persuasion on this guy. Persuasion. Oh, I should have rolled that in the tower stack. Forget about the tower. That's okay. I'll take that pers- uh, I'll take that roll and he says, uh, I can uh, I surely can use a drink. Uh, give me give me a minute. I got to I got to go uh do something over at the, the the house over there for a second. Uh, I forgot I uh, forgot a little pouch of gold, you know. <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh, uh, we'll pay for it. <clears throat> Let's go get some drinks. All right, so you're trying to convince him not to go back and get his uh he, because he forgot his. It seems like he forgot to take uh get his salary. I'll be there in the morning. I'm gonna we'll buy you a couple of drinks. You can laugh for the next day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys. All right, uh, roll another one and, and roll another persuasion, and then um and see if you uh you can get him to not go back there. Yeah, that was a. Two of you rolled. One of you rolled a nat one. One of you rolled a nat two. So that's not that's not Ooh. gonna work. <laughs> he says, "There's something fishy about the two of you." He looks at you, and he shakes his head as he starts walking backwards. So, the, so the entrance to the black site is, you know, it's a good like ninety feet away from where you guys are standing right now. Uh, the play of the the alley is fairly fairly. It's fair, it's at nighttime, and there's not many people around. Maybe a couple of beggars and vagabonds in the corner. Hmm, excuse me. And this guy, uh, he looks like he's spooked, and he's uh, walking black. He's walking backwards, retreating uh, to the entrance. So meanwhile, we go back inside. Uh, we go uh, back to the inside, and uh, the Inquisitor Halig uh, has just stormed off upstairs. And then, uh, so, so now, like, uh, so now the receptionist now leans over and says, all right, now can you please remove this illusion? You don't know how. <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, now, like, motions to one of the guards. Uh, the two of you, you see the guard approaches you and the guard takes out a thorned whip. And, and now, like, says, maybe we should remind you. And uh, they're about to whip you as a slave. I say, hold on, hold on a minute here. I said, uh, this is a very valuable property of a very valuable person. And and uh, to be honest with you, what's, what was the guy's name? Fulrak or Ful, the guy we got the uh, credentials from? Um, Ful something or something like what, that. What? Oh, oh, you're talking about the um, the, uh, the 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 co-conspirator. His, yeah, his name got... is uh, Nyarush Zamoroth. Oh, Nyarush. Yeah. yeah, that was close. <laughs> so, so, I mean, Nyarush is uh, the one that sent me. As a matter of fact, he gave me a little bit of coin to do this. I'm trying to get into his good good, good graces. Uh, the reason I even used a uh, um, this illusion was for... Um, in order to uh, not let anybody know who I am, uh, he wouldn't be very happy if people found out who I was, and he wouldn't be very happy if this person's property got uh, lashed with a with a uh, whip. She looks at you and she says, "You sound ridiculous." Well, um, I, when you're dealing with the kind of people I am, then you would be ridiculous too. 
She says, well, if you're bringing a prisoner in, you know the procedures, right? And she, uh, she I, told you I, don't, I don't work for you guys. I work for Oh, you actually do. Guy. You, you, you actually, actually, um, technically you do work for them. <laughs> but, but, um, you, you're, you do work for them because you're copying one of their guards. Oh, okay. So, oh, so she, part. she reaches down and she takes out, um, a huge, uh, parchment roll. And uh, she starts unrolling like the dirt. There, she starts unrolling pieces of parchment, and she says, "Okay, so we have a uh, prisoner registration form. She hands you these forms. She says we have uh, we have a special request form. We have an overtime request form, <laughs> and she gives you like eight or nine forms. Uh, this insane bureaucracy, and you're looking at all these forms in front of you. She says, "Well, if you bring a prisoner down here, you're gonna have to fill, you're gonna have to go through the procedures." Well, listen, um, Zarush, whatever his name. Oh, there's my thing right there. <laughs> I couldn't find my journal. Uh, Yana Rush, uh, give me a scroll that I could contact him. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to contact him and let me know, let him know that you're giving me all this extra work to do for just to keep a prisoner overnight for him. Oh, okay. Is that, is that I, I like, I like that. That would be an intimidation check. Okay. Intimidation. Okay, I'll do. I'll use. I'll use my uh, inspiration too. <laughs> Intimidation. Okay. Well, I didn't. I thought I hit the advantage. Was that good enough, or I need to roll yeah, again? Yeah. Roll no, no. two die. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two die? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, we got fair. it. We got it. Uh, she looks at you. She says, I don't care. I don't care who you work for. You're, you're going to have to fill out the paperwork. So she puts all, she puts this whole big pile of paperwork in front of you, gives you a quill and, uh, and you start filling out the paperwork. Um, we're going to go back outside and now we have uh, this guard and he is walking back to the, he's walking back to the entrance of the black site and he's going to expose, uh, Naris if he gets there. Because obviously he looks exactly like Neris. So unless you guys stop him. Uh, it's open to see well, I don't got any other ideas, so uh, I will polymorph the guy. All right, I, a <laughs> I I put a um I put a uh, I put the NPC there. You can try. Oh my gosh. You can try to cast a spell. If you fail, then he's going to attack. Obviously. I hope he's not too wise. Uh, you polymorph him into a turtle. Waiting up for a turtle spell. That's better than what I was going to do. I was going to smite his ass. You, you still can. He's a turtle now. <laughs> I pick up the turtle and uh, bring him back into the alley, and uh, <laughs> hopefully, no one's gonna bother him too much and uh, find a place to put him that he's not gonna be able to. Uh, All right, yeah, him. he's he, like he's a, he's like stuck a like this. Or something. <laughs> he's stuck like this for a good hour. Uh, let me put the concentration to the line. Yeah. Okay. So back inside, uh, Naris, you you are looking at this paperwork. It is the worst bureaucracy you've ever seen. It's like um, you go, um, it's it's worse than doing your taxes. It's like uh, go to line one C, uh, get the total of line one C in order to fill out line one A. You have to roll a flat intelligence check just to fill this out. Oh Properly. wow! Did you say not really, or did you say? No, you have to roll an intelligence check. A flat intelligence check, no skill involved. Well, I don't have very much intelligence. Ah, but you rolled great. All right. <laughs> so uh, you do manage to fill everything out to the best of your ability, and it takes a good five minutes. Uh, Nalik checks uh, checks the thing you filled out, and she's all right. Bring him downstairs. She's like, don't interfere with the interrogation, though. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I, I have nothing to do with an interrogation. I just need to do this. Uh, get out of here. All I right. got a date. 
So she instructs the, she kind of motions for the guards in the room to kind of step aside uh, for you, uh, for you to go downstairs. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so I got the leash and I said, I hope this, uh, I look at the, uh, at Tiny, my my, uh, prisoner, and I say, this daggone spell you pulled me better wear off pretty soon or I might just have to kill you anyway and tell you tell the, your boss someone else did it and then grab him and uh, grab her and take her down the stairs so as you as you start going down the stairs you notice that the at the end of the stairs there's a door that's closed and from the other side of the door you hear some screaming oh no no I, I swear I had nothing to do with it nothing to do with it <laughs> we'll see uh, you hear a screaming and, uh, you know, uh, the screaming's only coming from one person. Clearly somebody's being tortured down there. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess, I guess they open the door and go in. All right, you open the door, you go in, and you are now in the... Where's... Let me bring out the cellar. Would that be the northeast room? Yes. Where the stairs are, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, so you you go down the stairs and uh the bo- the bottom floor is uh just is uh uh it puts you in this big chamber which uh which they've kind of hollowed out to turn into to make into like a an interrogation chamber. And what you see is this. In the corner of the room, you see this poor man. Uh, he is uh, shackled to the wall, and there are these two guards, and they are sadistically just having a ball. They, he is already badly beat up um, to the point where he has, like, two hit points left. And they are putting scorpions at his face, and the scorpions are stinging him. And you can see his face is getting bloated with, uh, with extensive torture. And he says, now I'm going to ask you again. He says, we already know you're a resistance fighter. We need to know what your leader is planning. And uh, this poor man screams, I, I swear, I, I, you got the wrong man. Where at, where about is he in, in relation so, in this? So he's uh, on the other side of this big chamber that you walked. So when you walk down, you're in the big, uh-huh, big room uh-huh. in the basement. He's on the other side of it. Uh, that's where the two guards are. So as you guys walk through, the two guards kind of turn over to look at you and Tiny, and they're like, "What are you doing back?" I'm still having a hard time. So you got the uh, room with stuff like the two barrels in it, right in the middle. Is that where we're at right now? Uh, the room to the left of that. And then the the uh, um, prisoner and the guards are with us in that room. Yeah, the prisoner and the guards are on that wall, and you guys just came down the stairs. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, I, I ran into some daggone trouble that I didn't need to run into. This Joker here beside me used some kind of stupid illusion spell to change my voice. I got in trouble with the boss upstairs. I'm not having a very good day. I don't want to have to do this, but but I was told by a big higher up I needed to bring this slave, lock it up, and then somebody will come and pick it up tomorrow, and then I can go about my business. I It's just, you know how it is. The, the higher ups are always wanting to boss people around and and uh, almost got me in all kinds of trouble, almost got me fried. I'm sure I'm on the, the shit list now. And uh, what, what are the, one of the guards looks like, you sound ridiculous. But you know what? You know what? You, you know what, Thax? E- every single time, every single time, you do one thing out of place and they get you in trouble. I know how it is. Hey, hey, you want to, how about this? You, you, you can lock up that slave. You want to come join us? We're having, we're having a ball here. This resistance fighter, he's, he's going to talk. He's going to talk or he's going to not be able to talk. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. A resistance fighter, huh? Yeah, yeah. You Don't you remember? We're the ones that captured him. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> How could I you forget? Recognize, I didn't even recognize him, though. His face is so beat up and stuff like that, I thought maybe you'd caught another one. Yeah, yeah. We're going to... Uh, I'm just... I'm a little curious, you know. I'm kind of... 
Maybe I want to become a, a physician one day. I want to see what a, what a pe per person's uh, skull looks like while they're still alive and we peel off the skin. Haha. <laughs> uh -huh. Got you know, anything out of him yet? Well, the only thing we really know, uh, the only thing he's really given us so far is that uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're planning something really big, you know. He's he, he's, there's something about a shipment he's got in, in that note over there you can see on a desk. But beyond that, he's, uh, he's staying mum. He's probably more afraid of his leader than he's afraid of dying. But, uh, you know, we'll see how much he is afraid of pure pain. Hmm, well. What kind of scorpions are those? Are they poisonous? Oh, yeah. Uh, genuine Thayan Razorbacks. He says, Aren't you afraid you're going to kill him before oh. you get anything out of him? Oh, no, no. This is an art form. Pain. I learned it myself in a temple of Lavatier. You see, the trick is to not let the scorpion pump all its venom. Just a little sting. And the other guard just kind of gently puts a scorpion stinger up to the, the man's face. The scorpion releases some venom and he pulls the scorpion away. This will cause excruciating pain for hours and hours. But it won't kill him. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And where did you learn that from? <laughs> the Temple of Lavadier. Mm, the temple, that's kind of yep. a scary place. You you need to go and partake. Pain is true bliss. Well, pain when it's not <laughs> inflicted upon you, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Well, this is pretty interesting. Um, You got the keys to the cells? He says, they, they're where they always were. And he just oh, kind of... Right kinda, over there? Yeah. I see him. Okay, for now, I'm, I'm going to take uh, uh, Tiny towards the cells. I don't even see how you get over there. That looks like that middle part's kind of blocked in. Oh, no, I still don't see. Is it more just farther downstairs or what? Uh, it's not farther downstairs. Uh, there actually should be a door that's not there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, that's yeah, yeah. I'm not, that's what I'm kind of confused. How in the world? <laughs> yeah. So you, you go. Th uh, you, you can you can navigate uh, with Tiny uh, to uh, to the back where the cells are, and then you go to the when you go to the back, um, you look you go into uh, the other part of the cellar, and there's a landing, and there's a little storage room. Uh, it's full of uh, little uh, supplies like munitions and weapons for the guards. And then that, and sure. then further, further uh, east of that is where the cells are, and then north what? is another interrogation room. So you can, you yeah. can, uh, the doors um, are are bars, and uh, they uh, they're like portcullises, and you well, can. Before you, I before I before I head over there, um, I'm gonna whisper those. Let them guys go back to their torture and whisper to Tiny and walk by the desk and let Tiny surreptitiously get grab that note. Uh, you, don't right, you don't have you don't have to roll you don't have to roll the uh, guards are okay occupied so okay you pass by and tiny swipes that note okay yeah, my passive sleight of hand should probably be enough to because they're busy with torturing the guy so well, yeah I mean, they, 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 they're, they're not gonna <laughs> they're not even paying attention they don't really they don't really care so anyway on the, on the way over there when we get in that middle room I don't even go all the way over to there but I've Talked it when we're out of your shot. I talked to Tiny and ask him, uh, ask her if she has any ideas on uh, what to do with this guy or how to, to get the uh, guards out of there. Or... Hmm. How does it take to cast that spell in order to do um, where you guys so the that dimensional door? So, so the two of you outside. Um, you, you've gotten rid of that guard by polymorphing him into a turtle. And then you see that <laughs> second guard that that was with him earlier, you see that guy come around as well. <laughs> you are an evil DM. <laughs> no, I'm trying to give everybody something to do. I know, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> see, I'm oh, laughing. Oh, here comes the other one. What should we do now? Hey, it's a good question. We're expecting another guy to show up. I mean, yeah, this is fifth edition. You're trying to leave work. You can't polymorph two things at the same time. <laughs> fifth edition. <laughs> let's um, let's start a fight between us and get him to come over to us, and then uh, 
the two of us can just get him and tie him up. Yeah, because we got rope in our pack. Well, we can cause the commotion, I guess, to distract him and see if he's interested in it. So as soon as he comes to us, then we just turn on him and grab him and take him to the bar. <laughs> take him to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> but she got that hey, idea. Or I, I, uh, we can distract him. Yes, we'll distract him. I think. Uh. Yeah. So the, hey. the second trooper, uh, you guys start uh, fighting amongst yourselves to create a scene. Because we're drunks. Yeah. You start punching, and the second trooper, he, he looks... Oh, where are you guys standing? Oh, well, let's see. Well, we need him to kind of see us, though, I guess, when we kind of come out of the alley a little bit. So yeah, you, you guys are right in the middle of the road, right? Could you Close lose to the alley, guy? yeah. He was some of his coin? I mean, come on. So he takes one look at you guys and he walks right past you. And I kind of like start describing the guy that we just probably Hopefully he kind of hears it and be like, I can't believe he gave you money. I wanted that money. <laughs> the guy was yeah, but it was, it was easy to take. Um, so the guy, um, when the guy overhears this, he stops for a second, he turns around and he looks at the two of you, and he, he kind of watches you guys fighting it out. He's observing you very closely. Uh, I'm gonna... I mean, all we wanted to do was buy that guy a beer, and, and um, he just does what he did, and... Um, uh, he, he, he comes over, he comes over to you guys, and he's looking at you, he's like, Yeah, the gentleman you're talking about, um, did you see him? Oh, yeah, he, like, just, he was heading down to the bar down the street over there, he, he told us the, that it was gonna be a great place to get a drink at and we're, you're too busy arguing about whether we want to go to that place or the other place the other guy told us about i mean um we're yeah. here to have a good time and just, uh, i need a deception no. i need a deception on that you're trying to misdirect him and make him go down the bar go to the bar another deception He says, is that so? And uh, you see the guy, uh, he seems to be looking for that other guy that you polymorphed into a turtle, and he walks uh, towards the place you directed him. So you luckily got rid of him for the time being. <laughs> All right, back um, uh, back inside. Okay. Um, you're, you're discussing with Tiny how you're, how, yeah. uh, how you're going to proceed with this, because yeah. at this point... These two guards are just, uh, you know, they're they are busy torturing this guy. Uh, they are torturing him to the brink of death, but they know it appears that they know how to do some special things to not actually let him die. So you got to decide how you're gonna t do this. Right. And then uh, all of a sudden, um, as as you guys are kind of um out of earshot, you you hear this guy you say, "Please, no more, no more. I'll, I'll talk. Stop. Oh, I can't take it. My face is burning." Uh, it looks like um, okay. uh, their their torturing might might be working at this point. So Ty, I asked Tiny if, uh, well, Tiny, do you do you have any uh, like invisibility potions? Let's see, what do I have? Do I have a potion of invisibility. Oh, I do have a potion of invisibility. Well, here's uh, here's my real quick plan. I'm going to not. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna stay in this room. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna. Say goodbye to to, to the uh, to my comrades over there. I might even throw them a couple coins and tell them to meet me at the bar, and then go on upstairs. Give me time to get out of the building. And as soon as I do that, you take the potion and uh, sneak up to the uh, prisoner and do your dimension door and and, uh, and escape from the basement. Sounds like a plan. 
Okay, so that's the plan. So I'm uh, uh, going to go ahead and um, we we spend enough time, and then I'll I'll actually walk into the room where the where the cells are, and I'll open one of the cell doors and clank it shut real. F so they, if they're listening, they can at least hear that, and then walk out and uh, say, "Well, guys, I'm on my way," and and I'll uh, grab a couple coins out of my pocket and, and throw it to them, just throw it down on the floor by their feet, and say, "Hey, you guys, come down to the bar as soon as you get done with that guy, and uh, I'll buy you some more drinks down there." Are, are you sure you don't want to partake? He's like, this, he's about to talk, but I think I, I just know. might might cut off a few fingers just for fun. Well, listen, I'd rather partake of some alcohol. <laughs> and I think you guys will need it after you get done, too, so I'll just talk to you later, all right? Uh, he, he nods you off, and, uh, and you, uh, you, you uh, leave. You, you uh, start walking upstairs. Okay, I go up the stairs, and I say, well, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm kind of tired of all this stuff. It's giving me a headache, and I just walk on out the door and go down the alley to where those guys was at, and... Of course, they're not there right now, but I will wait there for um, uh, Tiny. All right, Tiny. It's uh, uh, now it's you. All right. So I'm assuming that Neris disguised as the guard. He's left. He closed the cell door, pretend locked it. Yeah. And no, right I actually now. left you. I just left you in that middle room. I just went and opened and closed the door to make it sound like I was locking you in. All right. So I'm not. Either way, you're not locked in. All right, so what I'll do is I'll drink my potion of invisibility. <laughs> so that I'm invisible. And how does that dim dimension door work? Now, in oh, order to in order to be able to dimension door this guy out of here, you have to sneak up uh, to these uh, uh, and not be noticed by these other. T well, you know, at, at least not not be exactly uh, not be. Uh, not be uh, alerted, not alert these other two that are torturing him, and you have to grab the guy. So you might even you might even go stealthy, even though you're invisible, just so you're no, so, so you're being quiet too. Yeah, you have to you have to roll against their perception, but you get advantage obviously because you're invisible, and the only thing they can, the only way they can detect you is by sound. Right. So. Now, is the door to the to the room that they're torturing the guy? Is it shut or? I left it open. Okay, you left it open, and they didn't they didn't shut it after. He... Well, I mean, they were they were pretty into what they were doing. They were they were busy <laughs> torturing the guy, but. But um, all right. I drink my potion of invisibility, so now I'm invisible, and. So I'm now invisible, and then I will sneak into the room. If the door is still open, that'll make it much easier. Yeah, I left it open. Roll a stealth. You can roll a stealth. I will uh, contest it with their perception. And because I'm invisible, I get advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. The only way they can detect you is if they hear you. So you I will I will roll their perception. Anyway. <laughs> <You're bad. laughs> that's what you got. Uh, that's their perception. They they rolled a pretty good perception. Oh. They look around. Hey, you heard that? They look around to where you are. Obviously, they don't see you. But it seems like, um, uh, oh, it, uh, it seems like they, they look around, um, but it seems like they, you know, uh, they don't they don't notice uh, anything there and they go back to doing what they're doing. OK, I'm in the room now, right? Yeah. OK, so I will. I will. I will quietly walk up to where they are. You do this you effortlessly. I'm within arm's reach of the man they're torturing. And then, as the picture depicts, he has his hand out. It's in a shackle. 
I will lay, Tiny Marble Cakes will lay her paw on the guy's hand that's, that's humming out, but because his wrist is shackled, and then cast Dimension Door. All right, but when you cast Dimension Door, of course, ca- the act of casting a spell puts the, puts you out of invisibility, correct? So uh, you be- it doesn't. It doesn't? I don't know. Uh, uh uh, in, invisibility usually fades if you take if you take an action like cast a spell. So the, here's the problem with Dimension Door. In order to take somebody with you in Dimension Door, the uh, the creature has to be quote unquote willing. So as you cast Dimension Door, you see the weaves of magic surround you and you come into view. When you come into view, uh, this uh, poor man being tortured uh, all of a sudden sees this uh, this tabaxi all of a sudden appear and attempt to warp him. He's looking at you. He is scared. Um, He is extremely scared, and he is presently unwilling. And then the other two torturers now see you appearing. What are you going to do? Hmm. You have, like, a couple of seconds to react before they, uh, they... No, Tiny will just, will, will look at you you uh, you have a couple of seconds before the dimension door is going to take effect and you you you'll warp out without him look the man in the eye and say don't worry and then as she's casting the spell um you can try you try to do a persuasion on him uh, unfortunately right, you you don't you get disadvantage on in this situation cuz you showed up out of nowhere this man is already <laughs> in bat in poor swords so I will burn an inspiration to cancel out the disadvantage. Okay. And then persuasion, right? Yeah. All right. Oh wow, that's like All right. Well, good news. You uh, he do- you managed to uh, gain his trust enough for him to willingly go along with you. He grabs your hand in a willing gesture and the two of you whoosh, Disappear. I guess you reappear. Uh, I guess your destination is that alley. Um, where, where we agreed to meet in the last session. Yes, which was where those guys was at. Which oh, where door, where, it was where Doorlock and them was at. That's where we was going to meet. Dolrak, we're at. Okay. Dolrak. I don't know. Dolrak. <laughs> at least that's how his name was spelt on the thing. It's, Everybody calls him Dorlack, but I'm like, no, it's Dolrak. <laughs> Dolrak, okay, Dolrak. <laughs> so, uh, so you managed to don't... you managed to rescue uh, Jigor. Mm-hmm. And without shedding, uh, without spilling any blood either. Mm-hmm. So everybody gets an inspiration for a good job rescuing Jigor as you guys uh, you guys carry him away. You can barely walk. So you have to actually <laughs> carry him away to like a safe location somewhere in the, in the slums. <laughs> I take my turtle along with me. <laughs> How long will we stay a turtle? An hour. Oh, go find a pond. <laughs> <laughs> Need to do something with him, he's going to tell on you. I got to find a inconspicuous area that I can kind of leave the turtle in trouble. <laughs> like, is there like a, a well or something? Like, I can lower him in the bucket into the bottom of the well? Uh, you we could, you could oh, like put him one. under an open barrel, put the barrel on top of him. Yeah, wh- wh- so, while, you're, while you're walking, you see you see a bunch of caskets. <laughs> there you go. Shut him in there the casket. Put him in the casket. You put it. You Throw put an the, empty pint. You put the turtle in the casket and nail the casket shut. <laughs> I was gonna say are the caskets like. I'm not. I'm not there in game with them, but. Uh, actually, at this point, you are because you guys have a. Uh... Yeah, we we met back up. Now are, are the caskets like at a casket store or factory? So yeah, yeah, it's like the people. Undertaker. Uh, the local or, Undertaker gets a lot of business here in Eltabar. Okay, so they don't have bodies in them yet. Yeah, they're, they're nah. just like on display. 
Like, you know, this fancy casket. On sale for 15 you. gold. And then we head back. So you guys bring Jigor to a safe location at first. And then uh, he looks around. He says, wait, wait. Wh who are you? Let's just say the, the, the land is fruitful. And we'll, we'll go from there. He says, aye. And it's time for the harvest. He says, did Gathna send you? <laughs> uh, yes. He says, I... He says, I, oh, I, I thank you for, for rescuing me. He says, I I don't know how long I could have held out, but I I, I think I'll, I'll be okay. But I, I I don't want you to bring me back. Why is that? He says, I, I just can't go back. I mean, and he seems a little bit unwilling to say why. He says, I, well, I think I, our I, job was to bring you back, so I think we're going to have to bring you back. He, he said, please, please, you, you don't understand. I, I can't go back to her. You what now? I can't go back to her. Why not? He says, uh, he looks at uh, the four of you. He says, do, do you know what, what she's planning? Did you hear? We know some things. Some things we don't know. Explain to us, because our job was either to take you back or kill you. Oh. So you need to do some explaining so we know what he says. What, what we're gonna do? He says, please, if, if you have any sensibility in your mind at all, you you won't go through with whatever she has planned. He says, as as you know, she's she's looking to assassinate uh, the High Tharkion Halakun, and and when I joined the resistance, that's the only thing I've ever wanted. I mean, he's, this man is evil. He's kept. Thay under martial law. He's a slaver. He's a cruel. Uh, he's cruel. He's jealous. Uh, he's, you know, he's uh, selfish. There's n nothing that any of us resistance fighter want more than him dead, but not at the cost that Gaffna's willing to pay. Not at the cost of what? Not the, uh, the yeah. It's like not at the cost that Gaffna is willing to pay. What does that cost? He uh, um he says you really don't know. He says all right, I'll tell you, and then and then you can decide what you want to do. He says, Gaffna, uh, it w wishes to assassinate Halakun, but her means of assassination are just reprehensible. She believes she's a fanatic. I, I, she's not the woman I, I met and, and served under for years. Something snapped in her. She's become insane and, and fanatical, and she won't stop until, until the entire city burns. She thinks that Halakun cannot simply be killed with a poison in the night. She believes that he needs to be killed in a grand gesture. So she's delivering munitions. She, she has made a deal with some nefarious characters and she has been able to obtain an entire barrel of, and he leans forward as he whispers the word, rune powder. Uh, you guys, you can roll a history. Uh, whoever's got the highest history check, you can roll it. See history. I have. Well, a plus I'll, I, four. I'll accept an Arcana check as well. I got a plus four to Arcana as well. No, you're, um, you're Arcana. Uh, you've heard of Rune Powder before. Uh, it is actually a, a fabled, uh, ex a fabled uh, to exist, but uh, no one's actually proven that it exists. It's something that uh, is is a, is a magically enchanted explosive. A small vial of rune powder can rune powder can level an entire house. And uh, Jiger uh, leans over to you guys. He says, "She has an entire barrel of rune powder. It cost almost a million gold that she's been saving up." Is that what's supposed to take place at the dinner? She she's not the dinner. She says she plans to kill him uh, at the wedding. The 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 explosive will level half of Eltabar. 
innocent people will die. It won't just be the it won't just be the high Tharkion and his cronies. It'll be everyone. It'll be the entire quarter of Eltabar will go down in flames. He says, I, I can't condone this. I I can't go along with this. Well, I mean and that uh here's 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 Jiger as you as you got uh he cleaned oh. himself up. He says, I, I can't I can't go along with this and you can't do this either. You can't let this happen. You you can't kill all these innocent people. He says, well, nobody yeah. wants the Duke more dead uh the Artharchion dead more than I do. He personally murdered my parents in front of me when I was a, when when I was much younger. He gutted them and put them on display in the town center. There's nothing I would want more than than the the Almond the Halakun to die. But I I can't do this. I need to go. I need to get out of here. Um. Well, to be honest with you, that does sound pretty horrible. But you were just about ready to give up uh, information to save your life in that basement. I. And uh, we uh, and we're, we were tasked to bring you home, or bring you back, or to kill you. That was a two, and we need her help desperately in something that is way more may, way more important, way over your head. And the only if the only way we can do that is by gaining her trust and bringing you back. I mean, we can bring you back. It's not like she's going to kill you. Uh, just uh, Jigar says. Jigar says, "Well, if that's if that's how it is, then." Then and, and uh, he he puts he points to his own neck and he points to your weapon. Do it. So I, I'm uh, going to look at uh, uh, Dorak and uh, kind of motion to him. He to, says, bring, "Just bring my body back, then, because you don't know Gaffna the way I do. I'm gonna She'll never let me leave." <laughs> I am going to look at the uh, Dorlak and kind of motion to him to knock the guy out. He has, he has like two hit points, so you don't even have to roll to knock well, him out. Well, uh, huh? He has, he, he, he's so in, badly injured, you just just tap him and he'll, he'll be knocked out. Yeah, well, that's what we want to do. <laughs> we'll just knock him out. It's a knock him over our yeah, shoulder. Yeah, you, not, you just whack, whack him in the back of the head and you carry him. So we head back. Yeah, katonk. <laughs> so we head back. All right, you got you bring him. Uh, you bring him back to the Fan uh, uh gambling club. You bring him down. Ba- story, guys. You bring him back downstairs, and you lay him kind of out over the table. He's badly injured. And then, uh, uh, and then Gaffna shows up, and uh, she 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 says, "Oh." Did, did you alert any of the guards? Do they do they know anything? Did he spill anything? Well, we picked up the uh, this uh, note that they had gotten and uh, stole it off a, off a desk, and uh, we made up a story about uh, delivering a slave, and they seemed to believe us. And um, of course, they know something happened, but they don't know what happened. Gafta says, "Oh, the notes encoded." Uh, luckily, they can't break this code. And she 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 looks at the, uh, she looks at the note. Be uh, it's a note she wrote. She says, "I don't think they'll get anything from this note." She says, "You guys did a great job. I thank you." Uh, she said, "She looks at them. And she's like, you did the right thing." Yeah, I think your man's in need of some medical treatment too. He <laughs> said, "I'll I'll see to that." And mm-hmm. um and she lo- she looks at the the four of you. She says. Listen, like as I said, my plan is to assassinate the evil High Duke Almond Halakun, and the time is almost nigh. Welcome back. She says, she says, I, I want, I want this to be a surprise, and you can see there's a, there's like this uh, insane glow in her eyes, and she says, how about how about this? You you finish the third task. I, I need some information at this dinner party. Once you get that information, then we'll all sit around together and we'll plan this out. It's going to be spectacular. I mean, we kind of need her help, guys. She says, yeah. "She, um, did you guys ask her um, what you needed from her yet? I don't, I don't recall. Oh, oh yes, you did. You did. You asked her about a wizard, Serana. She says, and about my part of the deal. 
I do indeed. I did indeed find a means to contact the diviner Serana of the high, uh, uh, the diviner Serana uh, of of the uh, of the Red Wizards. She says I've sent her a message. When she replies, I will let you know forthwith. I sent her a message that there are interested parties that uh, would like to contact her. What what should I say in this? Uh, she's like. She's like, well, um, is there anything else you want me to to send her in a message through my agents? Well, what do we have um, in the amulet that we're supposed to show her? Uh, she gave you an air. Uh, she uh, when you before you entered the adventure, Serana, Serana's copy gave you this amulet, and okay. you guys uh, are instructed to show Serana this amulet. Okay. So then I guess we have something very important to show you and, and ask you, I guess. Let's do a drawing of the amulet, maybe on a piece of paper. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. So we'll grab a piece of parchment and we'll make a, uh, a sketch of the amulet and roll it up. Do you show Gaffna what the amulet looks like? I would roll it up, fold it up, and no, we're going to just roll it up, and we're going to put a wax seal on it. All right. Gaffna takes it from you, and she says, "I'll make sure Serana gets this." She said, "She says now, time is of the essence. I believe we have three or four days." It says in in. Uh, she says, in, in the three days, there there is going to be a big event. There's going to be a wedding. You want me a wedding? Yes. Meow, meow, meow. Do tell. Now, meow, meow. this is a wedding between Argos Toslav and Delia Preen. Uh, they are minor officials, but they're very wealthy and contributors to the political campaign of the Tharkion himself. Now, what I need to know is whether or not Almund Halakun the Tharkion will be present at the wedding. If he is present at the wedding, then the plan can uh, can proceed as planned. But if he's not, we have to make changes, and we only have one chance at this. There's one only one chance to ignite the spark of revolution. Gaffna then kind of uh, goes into uh, goes into her pack and takes out some more uh, papers. She says, "I have here with me invitations for the reception to the wedding, which will be taking place three days from from now." She says, "I need I need someone who is will not be recognized under any circumstance, which is you." Even my best agents, there's always a risk of recognition, especially when we walk right into the hornet's nest. But you, you're foreigners. Nobody will know who you are. And you, you're, you clearly can be trusted from what you've been done for me before. I need you to infiltrate this dinner party, this reception, and find out if the Tharkion will be present at the wedding. The reception is tonight. And you, by the time you guys are, are having this conversation, it's already early in the morning. So it's, it's very important that you're not discovered and you don't cause a scene or any suspicion that can uh, spook the Tharkion to not attending. He usually keeps he usually keeps himself safe in his in his uh, castle in the high chambers, warded by multiple red wizards' magic. Very difficult to reach. But but if he attends this wedding, he'll be open for attack. Okay. Well, how are we going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, she so she takes dinner tonight. She takes she takes, she takes out her wedding tonight. She takes out a a, a scroll, uh, an invitation scroll, and she says, "This scroll." Uh, uh, guarantees you entrance to the reception. You are to be, re uh, you are to be allowed in as representatives of Nyarush Zamoroth, the same guy that you guys have been using uh, his uh, his name so far. 
She says, as for your circumstances, why you're there, you're going to have to figure that out. Do you have a layout of the uh, reception hall? She says, indeed I do, but I as a DM don't. So she does show you the reception hall. Uh, it's, a, it's a it's a very it's a rather large palace. There's a kind of a there's a big entrance, a foyer. Uh, there's a dance okay. hall. There's like a, a, a dining uh, room. Like it's a really rich establishment. Uh, pretty standard looking. Uh, she shows you where you're going to be and and where the guests uh, the other guests are going to be and where you're going to arrive. She says I've arranged for a carriage to pick you up. Uh, you need to present yourselves as fine nobility. And you need to make them believe it. Sounds good. Is there any other questions we need to ask, guys? What should we would... do now? What was that, Tiny? She's asking what we should wear. Yeah, I don't think this our... this this is a noble's dinner party. Oh, you would be expected to wear and uh, wear fine clothing. Do you have such fine clothing? Because we don't. Says, <laughs> of course, I do. And uh, she uh, she kind of takes you to a back room that opens up to a massive wardrobe of disguises. And you guys can just take your pick to find something that fits you properly. Like you find you find this rich uh, rich fancy tunic with all these frills and stuff. You find all that stuff that nobles wear. It's, just, it's very important that you don't make a scene and you don't uh, you don't stand out too much. So you will already stand out looking the way you do because you're clearly foreigners and, no, and none of you are even human. But uh, as representatives of Nero Samaroth, it is not unexpected to have, uh, to, to have uh, other races. Are they going to allow weapons into this? No, they won't. But... Yeah, we're going to have to go early and stash our weapons outside somewhere just in case. Idea. Then we'll come back, change our clothes, and then get ready for the uh, dinner party. Yeah, I have a, a scroll of Alter Self. I uh, could give one to uh, Tiny so she could alter her appearance to, to being a human being so we don't have to explain the whole slave thing. Yeah. Or, or she can get a set of earrings, and then and then explain <laughs> that the reason she has her ears pierced is because she was a slave, and then her owner decided to free her. But she decided to continue to serving her owner out of her own free will, with her freedom, and so he pierced her ears as a symbol of that. So then you could just be be like my uh, servant, but yet you're free, a free servant. Exactly, like choosing to serve this person as a free person. I feel you. I guess Do we that... have an idea of, uh, I'm asking Gaffin if we have an idea of who would probably best to get in contact with to find out if the... Uh, Tarkian is going to be going to a wedding. Uh, she says, well, as far as I know, in this wedding reception, Well, if you're still talking, we lost you at wedding reception. <laughs> oh, I, you did? <laughs> long, 
It was a dramatic pause. <laughs> well, this is, I waited a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think he was like trying to come up with a name. If I think <laughs> she, she says, um, she says, as you know, um, uh, she says my, uh, she says one, one of my, one of our consorts and a supporter of the cause, and the the man whose name you are, uh, you are going under is Nurush Zamoroth. And he is a Senecal of Eltabar. He is one of several Senecals. Uh, he is not the Senecal in favor with High Tharkion Al uh, Almond. There's another Senecal by the name of Ethra Tastin, whom the of uh, whom Halakun favors. If anybody would know, uh, if anybody would know the uh, the the. Tharkion's whereabouts it's Ethra because it is not a very it, it is pretty well known that she and the uh, the Tharkion are having an affair so she is a Ethra Ethra Tastin and she is a you, you'll you will notice her immediately she is uh, quite beautiful as opposed to uh as opposed to the Tharkion himself, a fat, slovenly, disgusting pig. <laughs> well, I'm thinking um, maybe I get all dolled up in a very fancy nobleman's costume, and uh, and when then we doll uh, a tiny yeah. up, uh, make her make her really beautiful, and put her even put her in a dress, and uh, like she said, how she could have the earrings and. Uh, uh, and I could uh, take her into the uh, uh, building on my arm, and uh, uh, I think I probably have the highest charisma of everybody. So, uh, and then to kind of walk around and, and kind of show, being showing her off, and, uh, and then you guys can just mingle uh, as well, uh, talking to some of the other people that are that, uh, uh, and listening is at the same time to try to to hear other conversations and stuff. Sounds like a good plan. Like a good, like a plan. Yeah, you, you guys find uh, a lot of uh, fancy clothing there. Uh, you find yourself one of those like feather plume hats. Ooh, that's what I want. <laughs> you I find got me a feather plumed hat. You and... find some gilded boots and um, you know some some uh, some beautiful hand wraps and uh, things that uh, things that you typically wouldn't be wearing as adventurers. You get decked I out want in some that. frills and a carnation on my lapel. <laughs> Oh, dandy. Yeah, uh, you, you find you find some uh, you find some exotic wear for Tiny. Like uh, you find some wear from the uh, the foreign lands of Kalimshin, make her look like some sort of exotic uh, 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 exotic girlfriend for you, I guess. Yeah, like an exotic dancer. That'd yeah. be great. <laughs> Depending on what kind of exotic dancer. <laughs> How much time until the reception? You say? It's tonight. Okay. Uh, you guys do have time if you want, if you need to do anything else, shopping, etc. Oh, like in the shops? Yeah, if you if you need to do, if you need to obtain any shopping, anything that you need to do. Uh, we'll look in there and see what's in there. I might prepare some different spells. I'm curious about. Are the um, shops the under cam uh, campaign? Uh, shops are uh, uh, one of the tabs. Remember, under quest. Oh, under quest. quest and store. Okay. Yeah, they used to be allow us to customize those tabs, and they took away that feature, and really upsets me. Because as a DM, I have a lot of useless tabs, a lot more than you guys do. I have a tab for vehicles, like like I don't need a tab for vehicles. Well, there isn't any shops. There should be. You don't yeah, have a tab. You don't have a tab for shops. I mean, there's no shops there's in the shops. Oh, yeah, there's no there's shops. The... <laughs> there's uh, no shops. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The sh uh, I closed the shops earlier. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let me reopen the shops in case you need anything. Oh uh, no. Uh, actually, level four plus spells are not available. They're contraband. Uh, so it's level five. 
spells that are. I think you said level five. Well, level four plus is a uh, five. Contraband. Five if you cast level five. If, you, if, yeah, you were warned very, very, very specifically that. Well, I remember it was spells that are fifth level or higher. Yeah, any fifth circle spell or higher that you cast will will raise will cause a disturbance in the weave, and the red wizards will know. Yeah, I cast Dimension Door to save Jigor, and that was a fourth level spell. Yeah. That one, was, that one was uh, stretching it already. Yeah. Uh... Great. Now we're gonna have the Red Wizards looking for Jigor and Tiny Marvel Cakes. <laughs> Are we gonna be able to go into this reception uh, with armor? Uh, you would look very strange wearing armor. You would uh, stand out in a bad way. Fully, if you went in there uh, uh, with art weapons and armor. Can we style the stuff that's in our uh, parcel? And who wants to take some of those scrolls of Alter South or Six of them? I can't use them. I believe. Well, I don't think we need it right now. Anyway, I got two of them already. But if we're just yeah, going as ourselves, that's... and the unfortunate problem with that is that um, uh, you whoever casts it has to hold the concentration on it. So you guys prepare yourselves, and evening comes. And you guys are all dressed up and ready to attend this party. A fancy carriage arrives uh, right right in front of the Fendelter's Gambling Club, and you guys get in. Uh, the person driving the carriage doesn't know anything about it. He's not a resistance worker. He's just somebody who was paid to take you to the party. So he, uh, you guys get in, and you guys uh, go towards the Noble Quarter. Uh, as you show up at the Noble Quarter, the... Uh, just entering the nobles' quarter, uh, you guys show them uh, show some guards paperwork just to be able to get into the nobles' quarter. But they wave you through uh, effortlessly because since you have paperwork from Yerush Zamoroth himself, the Senegal. And you guys are winding up the nobles' quarter, and you guys re see that there is a private estate uh, right in in the center of the nobles' quarter. Uh, this is uh, the center of Nold Quarter, but it's also adjacent to the Docks Quarter. Uh, there is a fork in the road, and on the fork, there's a huge yew tree. And winding up the yew tree is an entrance, and you can see that there's a big gilded sign that says a to the Toslav Estate. And you guys go up the Toslav Estate because it's uh, Argos Toslav, who's the person who's going to be getting married. Uh, going up... Uh, a couple of, a couple of minutes later you guys go up a winding cobblestone road and and you can look around your surroundings automatically are just uh, vastly different than the rest of the city you guys are in a place that's just perfectly manicured uh, bushes and uh, grass and and uh, and a forest uh, the roads are uh, spotlessly clean uh, there's there's nobody around about except for servants and slaves that are taking care of the premises uh, like landscapers, and you you guys can see there's several other carriages that are going up this road as you go up. Uh, it goes uh, winds up uh, the top of a hill until you finally get uh, to the estate. It's a really a majestic looking estate. Uh, the estate uh, uh, it appears to be uh, managed by maintained by a different tharch, the tharch of Pyridos. Uh and it's a walled compound. There's a circular drive around a massive gilded fountain uh, with magical uh, water spray, uh, magical enchanted uh, lighted water spraying out of the fountain. And the fountain has this uh, fancy marble stonework that depicts a battle between a squid and a ship. Uh, th uh, this is a uh, sheer opulence, probably costing uh, uh, tens of uh, tens of thousands of uh, gold to create. And you guys, uh, you, you guys are let out, and you get you get to the door to the entrance to the foyer. Uh, the guard uh, checks your paperwork. He can, gives you a once over, and then he motions you in. Uh, 
Pepe, we walk uh, in. Yeah. I, <laughs> we walk in. I assume are we are we going? Is it like a real fancy dinner where we're announced or? Like a we just, just walk in or, or, and it's, it's just people kind of. Well, it's a uh, it's dinner has not started yet. This is just the uh, uh, you guys have just here at the reception. So you see a lot of nobles milling about as you kind of uh, you kind of look around. You don't see anybody you recognize, and you see a whole bunch of nobles just milling about as you're just kind of standing out there, standing there, looking, standing out like a sore thumb. Every everyone turns their head to look at you because it appears that everybody else is a human. And you guys are the only, uh, the four of you are the only non uh, non humans to uh, be showing up here. So I'm arm, arm, I'm arm in arm with uh, Tiny, and I'm. Hello, everybody! So glad to be here. Been looking forward to this for a long, long time. Hello, how are you? How are you? Oh, uh, 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 performance. <laughs> so Naris, you're taking the lead, um, and you're trying to make yourself look like you're. Uh, can I, use comfortable. can I use the help action to give him advantage by doing like nice little waves and some oh sure sure rolls and stuff in her because tiny, tiny's decked out in like a pretty dress and and she's loving it <laughs> so everybody's just staring at you and you hear people whispering like who is that well, why are they here uh, you know, you see all these nobles kind of, they're looking a little bit squeamish. They're kind of, they, they seem to be avoiding you as you walk in there, kind of being, trying to be boisterous. I mean, and, and that's fine. I mean, um, did they tell, did they tell us what, uh, do we know what this Ed, Edstra or, uh, um, uh, Ethra looks like? You don't know exactly what she looks like, but you're told that you'll definitely know if when you see her because she's so, so. I'm looking around to see if I see any real beauties as I'm as as I'm acting and walking along. Uh, and... You you can do a perception as you kind of take a look around, uh, just surveying the people. Okay. With me being a part of the Church of Salem, would I be hated? Well, you don't, they don't have to know you're the part of your yeah, part there's of the nothing, I'm just saying. There's nothing identifying just... you as a Sailor Knight uh, because you have your armor and your regalia off and you're wearing these fancy noble frills. Okay. <laughs> and also, um, I fa um, after playing Barvelous Gate 3, I realized it's, pr pr it's pronounced Salune. Yeah, and, that's what Lune yeah. But you know what? I, uh, I've pronounced, pronounced it Sailune my the whole time. Because you know how there's that accent above the U? Mm -hmm. That's above that accent. E, yeah. That's called a circumflex, and that's a French accent. It's not in the English language. And the French people would never pronounce the E in Ceylon. So I've always pronounced it as Ceylon. And then now I found out it's pronounced Ceylon. Which is fine. Mm. I don't care. You <laughs> we'll know, in English, you wouldn't really pronounce the E necessarily. Uh, possible, some but... English is weird. Um, English, yeah, English has is uh, weird. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the problem with English is uh, it's a difficult language. Like if if we if you got presented with a word that you don't really know already, um, it's very easy for us to get confused because our rules are not consistent. For instance, mm -hmm. the other right. god, the other forgotten realms god called Sune, is pronounced with it with an a. Suna. Sune. Or Sune. No, S U N E. Sune, the god of uh -huh. music and and performance. Right. Yeah. So. That's fine. I, I mean, either either works. It's fine. So, um, you guys, uh, you guys come in. You're not making many friends. And uh, the first person that approaches you is this gentleman. He comes over to uh, to you, Naris, since you're the one who seems to be leading the troop. And he does a little, a very fancy noble bow, and he says. Jorga Ulten, at your service. Uh, may I, may I inquire as to who, uh, to whom I'm making my this acquaintance? Ah, Jorgen Ulten, eh? I'm a Lord Mildew Evergreen, and this here is my servant, Little Kitty. I love her so much. She used to be my slave, and, and I just adored her so much. I just, uh, I just had to free her, and, and now she, uh, you know. Gives me a little bit of pleasure now and then, but isn't she cute? Uh, the man, the man, uh, he's holding himself up straight, uh, very, very kind of stiff, and he squints his eyebrows at you um, at the story that you're giving. And he says, 
uh, who, uh, may, may I inquire as to, to whom you're associated as to how you got the invitation to this gathering? Well, I have papers right here. Just look at my papers. They uh, were he, happy to give me papers. No, no. This is he, supposed he, to be he, a he, joyous situation. He puts his hands up. He's like, no, no need to show me papers. I, I'm, I'm not a guard. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, <laughs> he you says, know, yes, aware well, of the other customs in this place. Uh, he, he, he raises one eyebrow. Uh, and you can tell that this is some, you know, this, there are some subtle kind of rich people dealings. And he says, I'm simply, uh, having a friendly conversation and inquiring, uh, as, as, uh, as it seems, no one's, no one know, here knows whom you, you are. Well, I, I take no offense, sir, because you are quite handsome, and, and uh, I'm just uh, here to have a good time and, and to celebrate, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, union that's coming up. <laughs> Uh, he, sa he says, uh, he, uh, he, lo uh, he looks at you and he says, you know, it, I find it kind of strange because uh, it, it is not that it's just un it's not that it's uncouth, but to see uh, foreigners and travelers of different racial persuasions enter these uh, soirees um, when there just happens to be uh, notices of uh, fugitives. I'm not saying that they they are you are you know in any way associated with this rabble, but as fugitives. Oh yes, oh yes. That, that's quite scary. That's uh, I'm here at the behest of a, a very good friend of mine that uh, he couldn't come himself, and uh, I was just passing through Thay uh, on my way to uh, somewhere <laughs> beyond Thay <laughs> to do some business. Uh, he says, "Well, it." it he says, I do not wish to tarry you for long, but as a serving knight of Bane, uh, you know, and, and he, That's uh, he he opens his jacket and he, show, he shows you this regalia of, of the, the god, uh, the uh, god, treacherous god Bane. And you do got, you, you do know that Bane is worshipped in Thay. And he says, as, as, yeah, as an official and a knight of uh, of, of Bane, I, I, you know, it would uh, it would not be proper if I did not at least ex uh, examine possible uh, possibilities. Uh, you know, and, and ensure that you are not you do not uh, you will not cause any problems or trouble to any of the other guests. And when he opened, showed me his uh, uniform and stuff like that, I, I put my hand by the on my cheek and kind of make a, oh, sir, you are quite handsome. Uh, you may, uh, you know what? You may roll a persuasion on him. <laughs> uh, fun, fun. Tiny Marvel Kicks will make, like, gestures of, like, amazement, too, and oh, he already rolled. Never mind. Oh, sorry. Uh... Uh, you notice that he's uh, he's kind of looking you up and down, and he's staring at your body, in 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 a in a very uh, in a little in a subtle but uh, obvious way. He says, "You know what? I don't think you're the one. Who, um, I don't." Uh, Daris. Yes. <laughs> he's scanning you. He says, "You know what? I don't think you. Uh, you're probably not uh, any troublemakers here." He says, uh, perhaps later at the dinner reception, uh, we can, can speak a little bit more. I would, uh, be fascinated to get to know you. Ooh, that sounds very interesting. Uh, now if I may, may I just, uh, walk around and talk to some other people now? Well, of course, of course. Uh, you're a guest here just as I am. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the dinner. Now, before you're off, uh, may I ask you, uh, uh, this is a little bit delicate, and I kind of lean toward him and says, are the bathrooms in this place uh he directs you to the bathroom off to the side i thank you so much and, and possibly we'll be able to meet later that would be very nice thank you very much uh yeah he he, he kind of uh he uh subtly brushes against your hand <laughs> as you walk by him no i blush <laughs> So, so the the four of you are going towards um, the where you go, you guys are uh, still staying together, correct? Or I am going to. Uh, what I'm going to do, I don't think we should stay necessarily stay right together. But what I want to do is is my, make my way over towards the bathroom where he pointed me to, because for one thing it would look suspicious, and then uh, continue looking out. Did I ever find the the beautiful lady I was looking for? 
you didn't see any any i mean you see a lot of beautiful women you don't see anybody who stands out obviously uh to you so as you guys are heading towards the bathroom um right in i mean front those guys can talk as they go along too they'll just you know. Uh, yeah, as you guys are making your way along the crowd, the next person you see, uh, just uh, standing directly in your way, uh, you guys are kind of shocked. A red wizard shows up. Uh, no, I'm, uh... She's labeled Mir M Marina, but that's not her name. So, oh. uh, so, so she she looks at the four of you. She says, interesting, interesting, fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. Stay, stop. And she puts her hands up so to stop the four of you. She says, "Oh, you're, you're, you're not from you're not Thayans. You're from somewhere else. Where are you from? Where are you from?" And you can see there, there's a there's a look of of kind of um of of, of pressure and, and intensity in her eyes. Uh, she doesn't she doesn't seem to be acting very couth. She seems to be like um uh, all over the place, anxious. Well, first thing I do is is. I know, look at her and, and she's and, clearly uh, a red wizard she's dressed out um, right. in full res red wizard regalia there's a there's a wisps of magic kind of drifting around she's like so are, are you demons do i uh, do, do, do i need to do det uh, do, do i need to do true seeing but must i do true seeing if you're demons oh my good woman and, and i bow very deeply i have so wanted to meet or at least come close to a red wizard i have heard so much about you and uh, you are a very beautiful red wizard indeed and and it is very much pleasure my name is mildew by the way and it's, it's such a pleasure to meet you and this is kitty uh she's my servant and uh she follows me everywhere i go i can't keep her at home or or she gets in a in a uh in an uproar and just tears up the curtains and everything else so oh yes 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 but you yeah you're a tabaxi are, are you are you from mastica she points at you, uh, Kitty. <laughs> and she Tiny points Marble, at Kitty, <laughs> which we'll call Kitty right now. She goes, "She, you're certainly not a slave. Not by the way you're dressed. Are you? Are, are you a traveler? You're from the Basque? Uh, are you from Mastica? You're from Chult? You may tell her, and I pet Kitty on the head, and I say, "You may tell her, Kitty. You may tell her she's a nice lady." She's like, "Oh, never." And she uh, she recoils at uh, at touching at touching you. <laughs> she says, "You must tell me. I need to. I, I need to know. I need to know. Do you have oozes in chart? Did Did Neris touch the red wizard or tiny marvel? No, I touched. I, I touched. I was petting. Um, yeah, but the uh, the wizard. Uh, she seems to be very hypochondriac. Doesn't want to touch her. Hyper. You. I was just petting your head, Kitty, to to calm you down a little bit because you was getting a little she nervous said, there. She says, "Are you from uh, Are you from Chult? Do you know about the oozes in Chult? I hear there are there are gray oozes in Chult. It's like all we have here are these damn ochre jellies and these black oozes. But I I need to I need to know about the gray oozes. Ooh, the power. You can see, um, she's she's very odd and erotic. Meow meow, don't know anything about oozes from Chult. Meow meow." That came through loud and clear. <laughs> yeah, that that was good. She says, but she says, but you you must you must talk to me about all the oozes you've seen. Surely you 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 are from foreign lands. You must be well traveled. Has has any uh, has any of you ha has seen a yellow ooze? We've seen some gray oozes at one point in time. And yeah, yeah. Oh, were they were they nasty? Oh, I have plenty of gray oozes in my laboratory. She says, oh, I really? uh, says, you see, I study oozes and she sits, uh, oh, she, she, she actually takes you aside and she, she, uh, gets you into this, a uh, conversation about oozes. Her, uh, she, she introduced herself as Sark Sarkella and she just obsessively is talking to you about oozes and she just, uh, drags you aside and uh, keeps you occupied, occupied by, uh, by y yammering on and on about oozes. But um, in the in the time that you spend talking to her, you find out that she is a transmuter. She is of the transmutation circle of the Red Wizards, and that's her specialty. Uh, she uh, has an, a huge pen, a laboratory where she studies properties of oozes, and she is obsessed with ooze and ooze behavior. And she is obsessed with um. She thinks that oozes have some sort of consciousness that she can bring out. 
Mm. So at first it's kind of interesting, but after a while she is just boring you with details. And she's just keeping all of you just, just stuck there talking about her oozes. And you can tell that the other patrons are avoiding you uh, because um, she mm -hmm. must have uh, grabbed them and talked to them about oozes as well. Well, I have a friend back home. Uh, he would be very interested. Do you have any papers or anything? Or have you written any books she's about like, these oozes of she's yours? Like, yes, of course. Give me, uh, you should give me your address. I can send them all to you. It's like I have 15 volumes on the great ooze alone. 15 volumes? That, that, that's a lot. That would cost a lot in shipping, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like, she's like, oh, well, forget it. I'll cover the costs. Like I have, I have volumes on acidic properties of gray oozes and how they change when they absorb living material. Oh, like in a gelatinous cube, meow meow. Oh, the gelatinous cube! And when when she says this, you can see that she actually has a convulsion. She's so happy. She's like, oh, would I? Oh, would it only? If I could only erase another gelatinous cube, it just takes so many resources. It's like, do, do, do you know of Gelatinous Cube? Do you have one? Meow don't have Gelatinous Cube. Meow saw one on our travels, Meow Meow. I wonder if you could uh, just uh, go ahead and, and send them to, um, uh, to Waterdeep for me. Oh, uh, it's, a. Uh... That's quite a that's quite a ways, but yes, it could be. Well, that's where my friends from. I, I'm kind of a world traveler. I love meeting new people and interesting people, and I write them down in your diary. I'm definitely putting you in my diary. So, yeah, as you guys are talking to uh, this, um, uh, her name is Sarke uh, Sarkella. Uh, she's, uh, she uh, she uh, she actually uh, tells you that uh, she's been uh, called the Ooze Master. Uh, the ooze master, because, wow. Uh, how, how much time do you sit there talking? I mean, because, you know, the, the night continues. Well, how much I, time I do you... Well, I will say, I'll say, well, you know, uh, here I'll write this address down in Waterdeep to send your uh, ooze volumes to, but, but I think I need to get around and talk to some of the other guests, if you don't mind. She says, yes, of course, but, but seeing that I found another kindred spirit in a love of oozes, you know, I just have to say, I mean, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but, you know, I, I, I just, I have to tell somebody, nobody would listen to me. And she says, you know, they gave me a special project. It's a special project. She, and, she, and her voice goes very low. Says, it's in, I, I, lean, I lean in. <laughs> she says, it's in, it's in a laboratory hidden beneath Bay Mount. It has, uh, it has unlimited arcane resources to raise oozes. Yeah, and you're breaking up. Yeah, you We're broke up. Every... <laughs> After laboratory, you really start breaking up. Laboratory beneath something, and then unlimited something. But you know, that's when you start breaking up. All right. So she, uh, you can hear me now. Yeah, yeah. So she says, uh, she she says, there. I I've just been assigned a laboratory beneath the Thay Mount itself. It is a powerful vault with unlimited magical arcane energy for me to raise and study my oozes. And she got her eyes kind of open up in a crazy fashion. She says, she says, um, you can't imagine what I planned there. But I'll tell you anyway. Says, ah. says I plan to create an ooze that'll be ninety feet wide. It'll fill an entire room, and it will be conscious. Can you take us there and show us? Says I. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't let anybody in that place. Says I shouldn't even be talking about that place. Ah. I'm <laughs> so lucky. But she, she, uh, she says. Big. But 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 you know. I, my, my 15 volumes, that will be the final volume. The ultimate treatise on oozes. Ooh, that sounds so exciting. Uh, so you guys excuse yourself uh, from the ooze master, Serana. Uh, not Serana, I'm sorry, Sarkella. Serana's the one you're looking for. Uh, you guys uh, make your way over to the bathroom. All right. I can stand out by the door. That won't take me very long to read the scroll. I'll tell you what my idea is, because I'm not 100% sure how it works, but the clairvoyance, and you make a you make a sensor. Now, 
and it's invisible. But I was wanting to be able to find that uh, uh, Ethis or what's her name? Uh, that one woman, her name. Atha. Athra. Athra, yeah. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. You don't see and any, then, you're then not the, sure. Then, right. But can you move the sensor just at random, or does it just, you have to move it to some place and it stays there? Do I, do I control where to move the sensor? I'm not sure. The, after... I don't know if the sensor moves. It stays in place. Like, when you create the sensor, it stays there. And it doesn't move at all, but you can, at any time, you can kind of connect to the sensor. It's like a, it's like a surveillance camera. That might not work the way I wanted it to then. Here's the spell. So... You, you create the sensor, it's like a surveillance camera, and it just stays there for 10 minutes with concentration. And they can't, uh, you know, and unless somebody has sea invisibility or true sight or something, they can't, they don't know it's there. And the sensor transmits audio and visual. Uh, I, guess, I don't really have on to be able to choose. see the place where I'm sending it to yeah as long as I, I, yeah. I can send it to, as long as it's someplace i've seen and it's within range yeah is that correct exactly so if i could see her before and as soon as i see her i could duck that's what this was my idea duck in the bathroom pass clairvoyance and put it in the spot where she's at so i can kind of listen into her conversations it appears that this sensor has a component with a price 100 gold even if it's on a scroll in a scroll it just um, oh you know, oh i'm sorry your uh, casting scroll has different rules no not a scroll doesn't have to uh um, include the material component mm -hmm. all right so where yeah. would you like to cast the the clairvoyance well i gotta i'm gonna have to mill around a little bit until we find that uh ethra okay and then I would like to cast it close to her, where the the sensor can pick up what she's saying. So uh, you got you you guys freshen up in the bathroom, and you come out, and you kind of take a look around to uh, looking at kind of interesting, no, no, uh, notable characters. You see this young, uh, dashing gentleman uh, sitting there in a the corner. He's sitting there, kind of. Uh, he looks like he's uh, contemplating something. He's got his finger on his uh, on his mouth. Uh, you see uh, this gentleman, very stately-looking guy. Uh, he is sitting there. He's surrounded by a whole bunch of people, and he's sitting there. With, you know, he's got all this uh, these medals and regalia wearing. And even that uh, that other knight that you met earlier uh, has been going up to him and talking to him as well. And you also see uh, this this gentleman uh, got fancy clothes on. Uh, he's got a big, uh, he's got a big uh, fur coat on. Uh, also looking uh, like he's standing out. Wow. <laughs> yep. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Ed Greenwood wrote this. So. Ed Greenwood just has a whole bunch of uh, people's names that, that are difficult to pronounce. With all with backstories, etc. No. And, fi need, uh... and then finally, you see this woman who really stands out. She doesn't look like she's even from Thay. She's sitting there kind of uh, by herself. She looks like she's some sort of diplomat. The world as the world turns. <laughs> yeah, you guys are looking around. There's just so many people. Oh, well, this party. So. Uh, this is I yeah. Think... This is a high no. Uh, this is a noble party. Uh, all a whole bunch of rich people. Does anybody want to go out, mingle, do uh, do something, try to find out? I what think you all need to go out and hobnob. It's up to you. Try to think... try to find uh, our our target. 
Or at least, to, or at least walk around and listen, listen to conversations. Is, where's the bar located? Uh, the, the bar, the bar is located uh, like towards the back of the the establishment. Um, uh, most I'm of the guys make my way. Go ahead. Yeah, mo uh, mo most of these uh, most of these uh, patrons are being served by the waiters. But there is a bar you can sit at. I want to walk up to the bar and get something to drink. Now, she, they, we were mentioned a, another guy, uh, Malu, uh, Marush. Uh, he's not here. He's not going to oh. be, he, he won't be here because he's the well, guy. There were, wasn't there two, two people that was going to be here and one of them was, uh. He's the guy that, that you got, you, you guys have been using his name and, uh, for the whole time to get you out of trouble. Uh, he's yeah, the guy. And the Rouge them are off. He's been conspiring with. Uh, Gaffna the whole time, but he's not at this party. No, I'm talking about um, the logo, Mothra, and Della Prem. Oh, those two oh, those are, are the, those are the those the are the bride and groom, aren't they? Yeah, they're the hosts. That's right. They they're not oh. here right now. This is just a reception. When when it's dinner time, they'll be uh, uh, they'll be announced. Oh, okay, all right. So you guys are kind of indecisive on what to do. So you wait a while, and then eventually uh, the uh, one uh, the the concierge comes out and uh, says that dinner's ready, and all the all the guests start piling into the dining hall. So you follow all the guests uh, into the dining hall, and you guys have sort of assigned seats on the edge uh, on the edge of an extremely long table. Uh, you've never seen a table this long. Uh, it's, uh, the table is like uh, like uh, almost 200 feet. It's, oh, wow. And you look at the, the material of the table, and, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's really fine, like, um, uh, elvish oak. Like, uh, it would cost a fortune to get this kind of material to build a table this long. So everybody has their own little assigned seats, and everybody sits down. And at the end of the table, uh, finally, as after everyone sits down, the host is announced. Uh, the host, uh, he is announced as Argos Toslav. Uh, he is a, uh, a noble, a very wealthy noble and patron of the High Thark uh, Hal Halakun. Uh, he actually uh, supports a lot, he supports with monetarily a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Halakun's uh, dealings politically. That's why he's so kind of connected to him, and that's why everybody's connect uh, everybody's here. And uh, he comes out, and you can you notice that he um, uh, he comes out with his bride to be, and uh, you notice that uh, this is uh, some this is a little bit uncomfortable because his bride looks to be one third his age. And they sit all the way at the end of the table to a uh, great applause. Everybody stands up and starts applauding them. Oh, I stand up and applaud loudly. So, uh, so he he starts banging banging the glasses. He starts clinking the glasses and he starts giving a speech. And it's a very kind of um, very run of the mill kind of speech about how he's so happy that everybody's here. Uh, they are all family to him, etc. And he just kind of drones on, and it's a lot of stuff that you guys don't aren't really concerned with, as he's giving the speech. But you look around uh, at who's sitting at the table. Uh, you kind of scan around, and you realize that right next to Argos is uh, probably the woman you're looking for. Is a very beautiful woman, wearing fancy jewelry. Uh, she is probably the most uh, elegantly dressed out of the entire crowd, and you 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 think that this is the Ethra you're looking for. She's she's sitting right next to the host. Uh, she's kind of smiling at him. She's um you know she's kind of uh, laughing at his jokes as as a dinner is served. Uh, they serve a really fancy pheasant. Uh, to to every, and it appears everybody has their own portion of pheasant, which is like you know you're looking at a good you know ninety pheasants that they serve. Uh, 90 pheasants, um, comp compared to what you guys see people eat when you're walking through Lowtown, where they're eating gruel. 
Uh, this is the sheer opposite. Uh, it's very clear that Thay is has a stratified uh, kind of class system of opulence and, and poverty. Are we, like, are we on one end and they're on the other end? You're, you're towards the other end. You're pretty far away from them. Have they started serving yet? Or are they still doing the preliminary speeches and that kind of stuff? Uh, they've already started serving. So you realize we... that, um, you know, the night's, get, the night's getting late. After dinner, they're going to have, um, you know, they're going to have maybe a, a little after party kind of thing. But then they're going to close up shop and you'll miss your chance. Right. So I'd like to go ahead. I'm I'm gonna gonna say, I, I at least try to be a little cordial with the people sitting around us and be like, oh, good evening. How's everyone doing? Like, I know we're unfamiliar faces. We're, we're new to town. Uh, one I'm of the to... one of the people sitting around you is this uh, this young man. Uh, you you find out you 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 get to know his name is Ivor Nil Nikos. Uh, he he's a merchant's son, uh, and he uh, he's here uh, kind of representing his family. Uh, they deal in slaves, and he's sitting there, and he looks like he's doing some calculations. And when you ask. When you start talking to him about it, he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm preoccupied. I'm thinking about the, the last shipment and, and uh, you know, and, and the uh, losses that we're taking with the slaves dying to the war." He says, "At this rate, our family's gonna be, you know, our family's gonna be no better than lesser nobility." And then he looks at you, Neris, and sees the, uh, sees that your slave is, low, is all decked out. He's like, "I see you're doing well for yourself. Are you in the trade as well?" Well, my family's not really in that trade, but I just had an opportunity to purchase this beautiful kitty cat, and uh, and decided that I had to have her. So I purchased, and, and she served me for several years and 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 actually she come to love me and and i went ahead and uh, give her her freedom and and she, after she said that she would just like to be my servant forever so now she dances and and uh, uh makes me happy and but uh, yes my family's doing quite well but we're not in the, that same business he looks at you quite unimpressed he's like well yes i've had many playthings myself he says uh -huh. but uh and then um uh, he says, he says, uh, he starts going off on a diatribe. He's like, you see, if you let love rule your heart, you'll never get anywhere in this world. He says, just look, look at me. I've, uh, I've, you know, I've, I've dabbled here and there. You know, I've had many lovers. He says, as a, as a matter of fact, I'm with, uh, I'm with, uh, you know, I, I'm with, uh, I'm with a beautiful woman named Beld right now. Now she is actually the, uh, she's actually the servant of, uh, of Ethra. It's like nobody can talk to Ethra. It's like he's like I think I'm just gonna work my way over, and then one day maybe I'll be the lover of Ethra instead of that fat, disgusting pig Halakarian. And this guy, this guy, um, very um, very open with what he's saying. Well, Ethra is quite beautiful. I, I would I would just love to meet her. He's like it's you and every other uh, every other male here, or or female. I don't judge. <laughs> He says, he says, I, you're not going to get anywhere near her with all the tension she's getting tonight. He's... I heard that she was like, uh, had all kinds of friends in really high places. She, Is that uh, true? Uh, he, uh, he, he says, he says, well, it's well known that she's, uh, plowing the Tharky on himself. No. That's, that, that's how she got to where she is on her back. Oh my, my. How scandalous! So, is the Tharkian good friends with the uh, married couple too? Well, he, uh, they, 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 they foot half his bill. That's why we're having this party in the first place. But uh, of course, that fat pig can't show himself. Too scared he'll be assassinated. Oh, oh. that's probably not true. I heard he was a very powerful person. I, I wonder. If a little bit of this and a little bit of that with the bride to be. He seems to like beautiful women. He says that 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 uh, Delilah, she's young enough to be my daughter. 
Well, some people don't, you know, think too much about that. If you well, like beautiful women. When, when, you're, uh, when you're powerful, you can do whatever you want. And he, says, he says, that's why this is what you have to strive for. He says, if I, he says, if only, if only I can get another, you know, if only I can get a shipment of really, really valuable stock, you know, like, like, uh, uh, like, like deep gnome slaves. Yeah. Innate magical slaves. Oh, they'll fetch me a great price on the market. Uh, I know there's a, there's a gnome village, but it's way out west. Are, are you, are, sure. you are you telling him about Tolan's village? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I'm not going to give him any specifics <laughs> of where it's at. But <laughs> he says, "Oh, he, is just it, shaking his head and he's, staring daggers at Narrow." He's like, "It's it's it's too expensive to raid the sword co uh, raid the sword coast for slaves. Oh, every every yes, time we try, yes. we just suffer in innumerable losses. My 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 own finances are suffering during this stupid war we're fighting." Pointless, oh my. if you ask me. Now, if you, if it's, if it's, why is it so costly for you to raid the Sword Coast, meow meow? Because it's far away, <laughs> and those barbarians have city states and v and vicious warriors, uncouth. And many of them frown upon slavery. I do know that. Man, I was uh, kind of look askance with uh, when she was a slave, and I was running around in those areas. Yes, while well, they these undeveloped barbarians have primitive beliefs. True, true. So, getting back to uh, the married couple, I, I wonder if uh, the possibility that the Tharkanian would actually show up at the wedding. I doubt it. He's uh, he's too much. Even of a... though he's a friend, really good friends with them. I doubt it. He's uh, he's too much of a coward. He to show himself publicly after the last assassination attempt. You know, you there's a resistance. You... There, there, there's a resistance. Those, those rabble are all over town. They're all over the place. You don't never know a resistance fighter from another. I think I've seen a few of the the, the uh, wanted signs hanging up here and there, and uh, I was wondering what that was about. Oh yes, filth. Uh, if you ask me, filth. So Enemies of a civilized society. So what exactly happened that you that somebody tried to kill him? Meow meow. Somebody tried to poison him, but uh, luckily he has food tasters. Well, uh, not too lucky for the food taster. <laughs> oh, they're just slaves. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. And he says, "But, but the," uh, he says, "But uh, you know, if whether or not the Tharkion would actually appear at this wedding, I think probably only Ethra would know, or maybe Beld would know. I don't know. Beld is Ethra's uh, is Ethra's uh, servant." It's like, why is it so important to you? And he kind of looks at the, the four of you, now kind of his suspicions roused. Well, as you can see, I'm very interested in people, and I've been uh, walking around in this uh, uh, celebration, talking to people. I, I even met uh, the, the uh, uh, Queen of the Oozes, and she was so very interesting. And I, and I just write all this down in my oh, diary. Oh, God, you and... spoke to Sarkella? Nobody speaks to Sarkella. Well, she's a very interesting lady. Uh, so, you, you're going to roll a deception to see if you can fool him into kind of letting uh, information. Because uh, you're trying to convince him that you're interested in just uh, meeting Hal Halakun. And not, um, not, ra not rouse his suspicions. Oh, never mind. <laughs> He says, well, I can, I suppose I can ask Beld when I meet her in a few minutes on the, uh, on the balcony. And he looks over at the, there's a, uh, so Ethra, uh, seems like there's a servant that's talking to Ethra. And, uh, the servant keeps going up to Ethra back and forth. And, uh, he winks at her and she winks at him. And it looks like they got something going on. Mm -hmm. So he uh, he says uh, he'll ask the servant once he meets her on the on the balcony later. Why don't you come here and ask her to to, to see my kitty? 
she would probably be interested in that or else introduce us to her and and my kitty. That's a great idea, meow meow. It's like oh meow. she's she's like, oh I can't I can't be seen with her in public. And he smiles. I smile back. I understand. Uh when you said can't be seen with her in public, who did he mean? Uh the servant. Bell. Uh, I understand, yes. Well, if you could find out more, the more information, that the, the, the I'd be happy to, to write it down, and uh, I might even be able to help you out a little bit. Oh, sure. I'll uh, I'll just ask Bell and see what she knows. Or we'll, uh, see see. You're what's so going. kind. You're so kind. So as you continue to talk, um, you guys gather more information, talking to all the people around you, and you realize that. Um, the, you learn about this wedding that's going to take place. Now, the wedding is a massive reception that's going to be held in the Temple of Bane. The Temple of Bane is also in a noble quarter. And it is just across the way from where you guys are right now at the estate of, uh, estate of Toslav. Now, the thing is, there are two routes to the Temple of Bane. There's the route of Temple of Bane through the city center and the route of Temple of route to the Temple of Bane through the streets, uh, through the street that you guys came up to get to this state. So half of the guests are going to be going through that street and half of the guests are being, going to be coming through the city square. So it is important that you need to know, even if Halakun is coming to the wedding, which direction he's coming from, because that's where the attack is going to have to take place. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> so Ivor comes back. Uh, you know, and uh, he comes back like uh, 10 minutes later uh, after he disappears with Belv. You know, you, uh, you notice that uh, his shirt is a little bit undone. He's a little bit mo messier than he was before. He comes back and he says, yeah, well, I, I spoke to Belv and she says uh, the Tharkion indeed will be at this wedding. <gasps> you tell. Oh, yes. Uh, you, you're going, you, you will, you will behold a magnificence of, cor of corpulence. That you have never beheld before when you see this man. Why this man is so large, and you can see that Ivor's getting a little drunk too. He's like, "Why this man is so large, he can take up three of those seats." Oh, three! That is a very large man. See, in fact, the only good thing about this pig is that he is a brilliant businessman. My, he built his slavery empire from a small clutch of elves he found in the forest oh no offense of course but some a bunch of, of course, a bunch it. of a bunch of wild uh, bestial elves he found in the, in the forest he, from that yes small i have nothing to do with them from that small clutch he built an empire and now has risen himself raised himself to be the governor of eltabar that's something to aspire to that is impressive yeah he probably lives in, in the largest mansion in this noble district doesn't he we're in it he, he says oh yes just uh he's like far up the hill there's the castle the ha the halakun castle uh heavily warded by magics the red wizard magics oh he'll probably make a big deal out of coming out of the castle and being surrounded by red wizards and soldiers and then going off as he marches to the wedding i would expect he sounds like that kind of man well I don't know. Perhaps he's going to be in the city center because he's also uh, he's also conducting uh, uh, conducting parliamentary business that day as well. Interesting. Interesting. He's like he's like Ethra probably knows she's probably uh, under his skirts all the time anyway. Well, so you can talk to my uh, my friends here while I excuse myself to uh, go powder my nose okay. if you know what I mean. So I will go into the uh, bathroom and uh, uh, subtle cast clairvoyance and put it uh, the uh, sensor to where I can hear conversations uh, between Ether and the people at the head of the table. Oh, very nice. I, that is a brilliant use of uh, clairvoyance. So you cast the sensor there. Uh, obviously, um, are you, in order to hear the conversation, it has to be an auditory sensor. So you, you hear it rather right, than right. see. Right. So you cast the sensor right behind Ethra, right next to Ethra and Tolslav himself, and you hear you start hearing their conversation. 
uh, Athra and uh, and Toslav are talking about uh, some sort of deal that they have uh, uh, that that they don't want the Grand Duke to know. Uh, they don't want uh, the Tharkion to know. Yeah, and they're whispering to each other and joking, kidding, uh, kidding with each other about you know they they are pulling some sort of scheme against the Grand Duke. And uh, you guys uh, wait there uh, while you're in the bathroom. You hear a knock on the door. Uh, right before you start hearing the uh, juicy bits. That what? There's a knock. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I was uh, hoping I'd uh, get you alone then. Uh, what was it, Mildew? Yes, that's my name, Mildew. Uh, he's like, um, he's looking at the, the, you know, the, uh, the all four of you. He's like, oh well, you know, this place seems to be a little bit crowded. I was hoping that I can just, uh, you know, we can have a man-to-man -man conversation. I say, well, I, I, I I'm. Uh... Uh, getting ready to meet uh, with a uh, another friend uh, to talk about some slaves uh, at the table, perhaps right after that. You promise? I promise. All right, I'll meet you here. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So we so... leave. <laughs> <laughs> I thought something like that might happen. <laughs> So you guys, uh, you guys go into a different uh, small, quiet corner somewhere, and you start hearing, uh, you start continuing to hear a conversation, and then finally you nail it. Uh, Ethra leans over uh, to Argos, and uh, and she says, "You know what? This is what we'll do." He says, "On the on the morning of the wedding, Almond, you know, when he spends the night at your estate." He's going to wake up and he's going to uh, uh, he's going to be traveling to the wedding down the down this path this road to the Temple of Bane. When he does this, we're going to sneak in and grab those papers. And then Argo says, "Perfect." So congratulations, you guys came what you came found what you're looking for. Uh, you can take some inspiration for uh, for using a creative way to find it. Uh, good job, Neris. Good job, good job Neris. Neris. That, that, you definitely were the head on that one. Well, anyway, I'm glad it worked. <laughs> it didn't work out too good the last time. Well, it did, but... Right. <laughs> so I, uh, doing that, uh, we come out of our little corner, and I kind of, I'm leaning over and holding my stomach, and grab hold my mouth and, and start running out the, the door, and because I'm, I'm retching, and, and my friends are following me, and that's uh, then we leave. All right, uh, you make a speedy exit out of uh, out of the place. Yeah, I got to get out of there. Uh, get back in the car <laughs> before that that uh that day and night finds you again. Before you want to stick around and hang out, Mildew? Uh, Mildew, I thought you were gonna. All right, I'm sorry, sorry, about, more fun I'm sorry about that comment about your village. <laughs> oh boy. So oh, I think he would have showed you a good time. Uh, you guys, uh, well, eventually you guys make your way out of the dinner party, and uh, the carriage is there waiting for you. Luckily, you haven't aroused any suspicions, and you guys get in the carriage and start going back on the way home. On the way home, you look at the path that you're taking, and this is going to be the same path that Hal Halakun takes three days from now when he goes to the wedding. Uh, you look, that path comes to a fork in the road, and the fork in the road uh, is an area where every single carriage has to stop. Because of the steep incline of the, of the path you're on, uh, levels out, and unless the horses slow down, it's going to be a very bumpy ride. So you realize that that path is going to, that'll be the perfect spot to attempt an assassination, right next to that yew tree. As you uh, make your way back to the Fendelter's uh, gambling club, to the eager ears of Gaffner. <laughs> so you guys All get right. you guys get back, and uh, Gaffner kind of uh, meets you even in in the middle of the club before you even you even get to the back. It's just well, well, what what what's the good news? Go ahead, Tolan. <laughs> I've been talking enough. <laughs> Or, or uh, somebody. <laughs> Nairis was able to figure out uh, 
exactly the route that uh, the Tharkeon's going to be uh, taking. He is going to be attending the wedding. Gavna puts her hands together. Perfect. She uh, And then she motions for all of you to kind of get to the back and sits all of you down as she kind of lays out her plan. She says, okay, so this is what's going to happen. Three days from now, the wedding is going to happen, and we know the exact time and place that the Tharkeon is going to be with his troop. He's at all times surrounded by guards. I don't know if he, there's going to be red wizards involved, but there will be after this, I can guarantee you. She says, as you know, I've been moving munitions through the sewers in preparation for this. It has come at a great cost and many lives to secure what I have here. And uh, she, uh, she shows you, she takes out of her coat pocket a little vial. Inside the, inside the vial, it, it's something that looks like an explosive powder, but it's laced with this phosphorescent blue glow. And she says, this, this is called rune powder. She says, this, what, what I'm holding right in my hands here is enough to kill all of us and to level this entire building. And she says, I have a barrel of this stuff. And that barrel will be planted right at that spot. And as the High Duke comes about, we will light that barrel and then we will clear out of there and it will, it, it, it will, ex it, it will destroy the entire noble quarter. It will send a message to the rulers of Thay to Zaz Tam himself that the rebellion has begun that his seat the seat on his throne will be no more and she looks at I'm you like, excitedly to see if you're excited as she is I'm I'm excited um as she's as she's explaining the plan to you right um a couple of her servants kind of come around one of her servants um Dolrak while you're not looking uh, while while Gaffna's uh, busy not looking, the servant slips a piece of paper in your hand. Okay. Uh, to to make sh making sure that Gaffna doesn't see, and the servant goes away. By the way, Zaztan was mentioned in Baldur Gate Three. Oh, Did you get to that part? Zaztan is men uh, Zaztan is big. He's a very famous guy. In uh. Yeah, came up in uh. Yeah. In a magic mirror. I don't know if you found that part or not, but. I don't know if I, I I I found that specific part. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in in, in it, but they specifically was asked the magic mirror specifically asked questions about him. Oh yes, I remember that 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 yeah. that um that part where you have to uh that 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 hidden away area. If you answer yeah. it wrong, that big, huge orb comes out and kills you. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that part. That was that was pretty freaking cool. Just it, say. Yes, it says, "Oh, uh, what do you? How do you feel about Zaz Tim?" And the correct yeah, exactly. the correct answer is, "I hate him." That's what I answered. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, well, it, you, you're answering in the words of the guy who built the place, and the guy who built the place was a rebel. Uh That's why. That's the correct answer. That was kind of a spoiler, so we're yeah. sorry to anybody else that hadn't played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a minor spoiler it's not not it's like a, a minor yeah. spoiler uh, i have there's so many like other things that are massive spoilers that you know, that oh, just, know. they'll ruin the game for some people oh yeah i would never do that actually that anyway. room was really hard to get into that was part of the um, even in, in the play test i i actually in the past i didn't have no idea how to get in there yeah because i failed the checks and then i kept dying yeah that is that was this part. Of, I mean, it's just a, it's an amazing game. It really is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, you're going to see more connections to uh, all the, uh, even the game that we're playing because I heavily use the lore of, ball, of things that are important in the Baldur's Gate franchise. Oh, cool. I heavily use a lot of all the things that are very important. So you're going to be seeing things that we have been through. A lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, cameos, etc. I won't, I won't spoil mm -hmm. any more. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Dolrak, you you were slipped a piece of paper by one of the servants. I kind of nonchalantly turn around, put my back to everybody, and I read it. Uh, the the piece of paper is written in a common script, very easy to read, and and the piece of paper says, uh, uh, "Back room. Meet me there, please. We need to talk." Okay. It's not signed. No, it's not uh, signed or anything. So I just kind of like walk around a little bit and kind of sneak off 
away from everybody and get to the back room. So Gaffna continues uh, talking to the rest of you about, and she doesn't even notice you leaving. She continues to talk to the rest of you uh, how excited she is. And you guys, uh, she makes it very clear to you, this, um, this assassination is going to be extremely destructive because this barrel of rune powder is going to level a quarter of the city. It's not just going to kill everybody in the noble quarter. It's going to probably kill everybody in the in the uh, surrounding areas, the docks district. There are people living there. There's like a, not even nobles, like like just regular people are living there. Uh, it's going to be a massive uh, uh, kind of um, destructive force. And she seems so eager about it. So Dolrak, um, you kind of you kind of just like uh, saunter off and you go to the back room. Uh, when you get to the back room, you notice that there's a locked door. Uh, you look at the locked door, and the locked door has like a, one of those little windows with bars. Uh, you go to the window, and um, and and uh, you you look uh, on the other side of that door. Uh, you uh, you see uh, the man that you help save. Hmm. <laughs> the man that you knocked out. <laughs> yeah, the man that you uh, the, that you knocked out earlier, as you can uh, as you record, Gigor. Um, he his his hands are bound. Uh, he is uh, healed. Uh, it looks like he is he has been healed, but his his hands are bound um, behind his back. His um, you know his feet are bound. Uh, he kind of uh, he he's on the ground and he kind of uh, motions over. He says, "Hey, hey, you! Please let me talk to you." Yeah, what can I do for you, man? Why why are you back here? Why are you in this? He says, Did I, you he say said, something? He says, I told you, Gaffna will not let let me leave. She's a fanatic. She's out of her mind. She wants to kill thousands of people. Innocent people, children, you you can't let her do this. What do you suggest? So stop it. Says so I don't know why you're working for her. I don't know what she's promised you. I don't have the connections she does, but anything I can do to help you, I will. I just you can't let all these people die. Well, I didn't sign up to the resistance to kill innocent Thaeans. And you can't do this really? either. I, 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 you don't seem to be, you don't seem to be selfish, inquisitive people. You seem to be good people. You, you can't do this. Well, we, we kind of need her help, so that's why we're doing this. She says, well, what has she promised you? Maybe I can, I can find it. She says, we need I, to find um. I can't think of that person's name. Uh, Serana. Yeah, we need to find Serana. Uh, how much do you tell him about what you're, what you need to do? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna. He seems. I mean, in the predicament that he's in, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of divulge pretty much everything. Like everything in terms of you guys are really? from a different realm, <laughs> and, uh, and, and this no, is a pocket well, back. No. That we're trying to. Oh, how do I word this? Wall chat. No, I can't give him suggestions. Yeah, because you're not with me, right? I'm not with um. You. Hmm. Let's just say that I'm really in need to find Serana. Um. Because I have business to do with her, and Gaffna said that she would be able to get me to her. Do you know where I, how I can get to Serana? So J Jiger says, getting in contact with a red wizard like that is not easy. He says, but there are ways. He says, he says one way to get in contact with a red wizard is to alert their defenses. He says, I can help you do that. It won't be the easy <laughs> path. I can guarantee you it will be a very difficult path, but it certainly won't involve killing thousands of innocent people. I need to do it quietly. 
He says, uh, he says, there's no quiet way to contact the Red Wizards. He says, I don't know what Gaff, how Gaffna is able to contact them, but I am sure that uh, in, the, uh, in the end, there will be a price to pay for dealing with any of them. He says, I, he says, I can help you. I can't promise that my way will be easy at all. Can't promise that my way will uh, will be as 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 straightforward and direct as Gaffna's way, but my way will be the right way because you won't be killing innocent people. As much as I hate to see Almund Halakarian continue to live, I can't live with the conscience that I didn't do everything I could to stop this senseless slaughter. Gaffna has gone fanatic and she's lost the per lost the very uh, lost sight of the very purpose of the resistance. It's for the people. Are there others that are there others that feel the same that you? Yes, but we're all we're all too afraid to speak up. Look what happens when we do. Yeah, and he, you know, he kind of looks at, uh, he shows you his rope that he's uh, tied up. He says, please, I, I, I'm appealing to, to, to your sense of right and wrong here. Don't let this happen. Stop her before it's too late. He says that rune power powder will, will, will cut a crater inside Eltabar. He's like, you don't think the Red Wizards will be hunting your your hides after something like that happens? Gaffna thinks that's the only way to incite the rebellion, to light the spark of rebellion. She's lost her mind. Sounds like you have a good point. That's why I the the, the right when I met you, I had a sense you're not just mercenaries. You're here to do the right thing. That's why I'm begging you. He says, I, like I said, I don't have as much to offer as Gaffna, but I can help you. I can help you get in contact with this Sirana of the Red Wizards. Well, um, you're kind of stuck in this room. How do you plan on doing that? Well, you'll have to, you'll have to help me there as well. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um, well, let me sneak back out of here and get with my my crew and all right so see what you can come up with so so you you return just as gaffna fish finishes up her plan and then she and then you know you can see that she puts her hands up boom <laughs> she says and i i i can i just like to see how much sad stan can ignore that he'll have to stop his war and come back to it and come back and he'll see uh, a, a strong people ready to fight him Yeah, Gaffna, that sounds wonderful and cool. <laughs> and then I kind of look at the other guy and kind of like give a symbol of like cuckoo -ness with my finger <laughs> without her hopefully noticing. <laughs> yeah, so as you guys hear the uh, hear her kind of um her plans, you do realize it is ex it's very extreme and it will kill a lot of people. So you guys, uh, you, uh, and she she says, "All right, do, you know, we got three days. So you, you know, you, I'm sure you want to be part of this 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 spectacular event." She says, "Meet me, uh, meet me back here in three days, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll uh, and then we'll prepare." Sounds like a plan. Oh, by the uh, way, did you hear from uh, Serana? By the way, I. She uh, she says Saran has not yet replied, but I'll t I'll inform you the minute she does. Fair enough. And then... So we exit up to our rooms. Yeah. So you guys are now Ooh. sitting sitting like in your rooms, kind of uh, sitting there thinking and contemplating uh, contemplating the situation. Uh, you uh, you guys uh, yeah you got to choose uh, what you want to do. Um. Actually, before, so I'm gonna tell the guys that I had a, before we a go, letter gave to me. Um, like, I'm gonna ask Gaffna a question about okay. all this. about what about all this stuff. Oh, Tiny will just ask Serana. She'll just be like, if 
if Meowdell do this, wouldn't wouldn't the king just get mad and just kill all of you and replace this Tharkion? I. Of course, but she even says. She says he he says perhaps but you have to understand the significance of this action the fact that even the tharkian is not safe the fact that the people will take back uh, our country our nation from these villainous tyrannical red wizards it's not it's not simply the assassination of of halakun which he needs to be assassinated don't get me wrong but it's the message there's no revolution that is, no revolution begins without blood spilled on the streets. And you can but tell that, that she, she, she says, she says, I mourn the, I mourn the lives that are, that the innocent lives that will be lost in this action, but they will be martyrs to our cause. Yeah, I think we need to. You can go tell to that she's a, she is a hundred percent convinced of what she's about to do. Uh, you know, I she's can, way I, over the edge in, in, in her uh, in her she's obsession. Willing to... I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty wore out putting that uh, all that acting on and stuff like that, and coming that guy coming on to me that kind of freaked me out. So I would kind of like to get some rest. <laughs> yeah, let's go up to our rooms and. Get his sleep and we'll come back tomorrow and go about our business. Okay. Uh, all right. Plan. So, so here's a question. So we're in Fay and we're five years in the past, right? Yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> However, um, whatever had happened, um, uh, according to you and your knowledge of history, appears to be able to be altered while you're here. So oh. what, the things that you do here do make a difference. Or you'd learned that in the past, where, way back in the first adventure, when um, I think that, that back then there were two groups, but one of the groups saved Meepo and the other group saved Yeah, Lilo. that was yeah. our group saved Meepo. And um, and depending on which one you, you your group you save, that that character actually uh, came back and gave you a gift later on. So you realize that whatever you do here does have an impact and will change the course of events. Okay. Well, and, and that... I do a history check to see if I heard of an explosion in Thay. <laughs> uh, you haven't heard of an explosion in Thay. We have not. No. And, no, because uh, it, it hasn't happened yet. No, no, but even even in your time, you haven't heard of a explosion five years ago, and uh, you do know that uh, Thay came in, in an attempt to invade the Sword Coast five years ago, uh, and uh, that they failed. They lost the war and they were driven back by an alliance uh, of uh, city states of the Sword Coast. At this time, the war is still going on. That's why Zaztam is not around. He is at the front lines fighting this this battle. All right, let's go to the room and talk about what uh, we need to talk about. Um, before yeah, we um... before we do that, now is it possible that like our younger selves might be somewhere in the world? Uh, it is possible. Well, they probably are, but they're probably not in fact. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you you know for certain that your your younger selves are not in Thay. And I'm, I'm still in the woods now. I took my, I took my trip. I forget how long I was going. What? You was probably in the caravan still. You would have been pretty you, young anyway. You're still traveling somewhere in the caravan. Okay. And and in this time, Janice Sunbeam is still alive. Yeah. So you're so, gonna try to change time. You're gonna try to maybe warn, warn her, uh, and then try to change time. We can try that uh, if you know how. Yeah. If you have a means. So that's, yeah, I'm gonna cast sending. All right. Can sending reach? Uh... But you also gotta think of this, there, Tiny. If you change the outcome of the caravan being attacked then we possibly don't meet and that's going to erase you from our timeline on 
saving these people. Hmm. You ever watch Flash? <laughs> I guess it depends on how time travel works in this campaign. Well, it's all magic, so it can work any way the DM wants it to. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll probably, um, I'll probably um, impose uh, things like uh, as if you, when you cast a wish spell. When you cast a wish spell, depending on how how big of a wish you're making, I might make it like a like a you know that there's some sort of a payback for for wishing for something like that. You also have to have a piece of fine copper wire. The uh, range is unlimited. Yeah, so. you, you, you can you can you can attempt the sending actually. Yes, and, even, and and sending can even go across other planes of existence. Which yeah. if you do that, if you do cast sending to talk to somebody from another in another plane of existence there's a five there's a five percent chance that it doesn't arrive yeah I, that's that's behind the cover roll don't worry about that and plus uh there's also a chance that whoever you send your message to might not believe you anyway all right well you can go ahead and send a message i'm not gonna stop you from that <laughs> well we can we go back to our room <laughs> yeah you, you guys are back in your rooms at this point I, if i were okay. to It'd be from my room, not in, out in the open. Well, I'm going to ask, what what would I know about the uh, religion of Bane? Um, I would probably know quite a bit, wouldn't I? Sure. Um, how much do you want to know about the religion well, of I'm Bane? Going, this I is have, part, going do to be you want to know? Argument. It says uh, I'm going to argue with the, the with these guys that yeah, this is a terrible thing that she's ready to do, but but think about this. The wedding is going to be in the uh, Temple of Bane. Bane is, is is every bit as bad, if not worse, than Shar. Uh, it's uh, one of the most evil things. And then plus, uh, the uh, guys down in the uh, that were torturing the guy, they were taking a lot of pleasure in the torturing, and that's uh, kind of what uh, Bane wants his uh, yeah. followers to do. Well, we uh, have. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to give you... Oh, I'm giving info on Bane, if you want to know yeah. about Bane. Bane is the god of oppression. Uh, he is one of the, the the three gods, Bane, Baal, and Mirkul. These three gods used to be human uh, humans, but they have acquired godliness from the god of death, Jurgle. And they, they themselves became the three evil gods. Uh, Bane is worshipped in Thay, because he's also the god of, of, of oppression and lawfulness and the god, the god of slavery. So the, way, the reason they worship him is for power. Uh, he creates a system, a, a stratified system of society and power. Of course, he is very evil, and they're totally fine with worshiping an evil, uh, evil god. Uh, the explosion, of course, will utterly destroy the Temple of Bane. It will destroy the nobles' quarter. It will destroy uh, a quarter of the city. Go ahead. Okay, and furthermore, if you think about some of the people we've met, uh, when we was even at the party, we met a slaver, that, and he was wanting to find a way to go get some uh, goblins to use as slaves. Um, we, we found a... Uh, we, they, we, we talked about a, a, a guy that, that based his power, the, the Tharkanian that based his power on uh, oppressing and, and enslaving elves. This is a horrible city. I don't have... <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nice guy, generally. And and to be to be truthful about it, death isn't the end. I, I know that from from my God. So they're going to end up somewhere else. I mean, they might be surprised where they end up, but this is a, a truly evil city, and I don't have honestly a problem with blowing it up. <laughs> All right, we got to vote for a blow up the city from Neris. <laughs> I mean, this is Bane worshiping we're talking about. I mean, come on, it's at least as bad as yeah. Shar, Dorak. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Bane is Bane is stuff up. Bane is uh, Bane is prob. I mean, if you were to gauge it, Bane is probably worse than Shar. Yeah, I would actually say yeah. so too, just based on what we've learned about Shar in uh, Borders Gate Three from Shadowheart. <laughs> Shadowheart, um, <laughs> she she ne she never stops talking crap about Selun. You, you notice true. everything you find, like you find a Saloon <laughs> idol, she's like, oh, that's a trinket, just sell it, it's worthless. Yeah. <laughs> she's constantly talking crap about Saloon. She's but really I, interesting. I no, like no, her. but I, I really I really do love uh, how they uh, they put out the Saloon versus Shard dynamic in Bardo's Gate 3. That's a big deal in Faerun. <laughs> that is cool. 
Uh, uh, another, uh, there's, there's another very famous uh, Baldur's Gate character that worships Shar. She was a drow that she, she got kicked out of her uh, drow city and got, uh, got exorci uh, excommunicated by Loth, and mm -hmm, she decided mm -hmm. to go uh, worship Shar instead. There's another yeah. one. Well, Loth is pretty evil too. <laughs> yeah, Loth, but Loth is regional, you know. Yeah, that's true. But she don't bug people up. Up above, much anyway. <laughs> well, she tries, but she rarely succeeds. Right. Anyway, I mean, I think yeah. there's a lot of lot of good arguments for letting her go through with her plan. And plus, you think you say, well, NSP people's gonna die here. Well, the war that's being uh, waged by Zostan, there are people dying. And if that takes him off of that war to come here to investigate these uh, rebels. Then you're, that's going to save people in that war. You're right. Pra uh, pragmatically, the bo uh, you know the body counts probably the sa that you save is probably the same that you kill here. Hmm. And you know, my, my God's in charge of, of uh, escorting people uh, to their final their, their final plane, and uh, I know that there's there's uh, some kind of life after death now for some of these evil gods. I don't know what that life's going to be, but it's not really going to be the end. And they might get what they deserve. <laughs> um, the idea is, um, it's not about the people who are evil here. Uh, it's um, not everybody in Thay is evil. Obviously, there's commoners, a lot of commoners in Thay. They hate the fact oh, yeah. that they're oppressed, and uh, a lot of them are going to die too. That's yeah. a, that's the moral conundrum that uh, Jiger brings up. Not that he thinks that these evil guy guys and these worshippers of Bane should live, but he does. He he thinks that the cost of killing the innocent people around it is not worth the action. Well, I'm, I'm still kind of for <laughs> letting her do what she wants to be, however crazy she is, because that's going to play into our hands. If she can help us out, truly help us out. Oh, yeah, she is going to help you out. You're going to get what you need uh, by helping her. And then plus, plus it'll be a, 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 a great distraction yeah. for what we're doing. You're not, uh, the... you're not sure how much Jiger can help you. He promised to try to exactly. help you. Exactly. You're not He's sure. He's tied up in a chair. <laughs> oh, well, I could, I could just... Make you cast a bunch of high-level spells so the the red wizards come and get you and then introduce you to her. <laughs> yeah, that'd be right, great. Right, right. That's that was the last thing I was. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's my. I'm not. I wouldn't. You know, he's. We don't know anything about him at all, and, and I know we don't know a lot about her either. But we know more about her, and she's been more true to her word for us than what he has. Of course. Not that he's really had a chance, but... You, you, well, you know, the, the only time you've met him is he's been getting tortured. <laughs> getting tortured, and now he's tied up yeah. with people, you know, that he was getting ready to turn over information on, so... <laughs> that speaks to his character a little bit. I mean, torture, I'm not going to say much, because, you know, I might break down under torture, too, especially what those two weirdos are doing, so... Anyway, that's that's, that's my two cents. Uh, I, I hear your two cents, Nares. <laughs> two, two, <laughs> two coppers. Two coppers. <laughs> but I, I, I just don't think that we need that this need to be as big as it needs to be. I think it needs to be smaller. I, 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 I will not feel comfortable just letting those who don't who just happen to be the children and everything around here. It's like, they don't know anything better. They they haven't learned anything better. Not just children, but all the slaves were here even against their will. They're, they're all dying as well. All the well, slaves like, and servants and um, all the downtrodden of society that get, that get caught in the And the same blast. thing's going on with the war that's being waged by Zatan. Oh, yeah. Well, what they could, what they... A good alternative would have been if she used a smaller amount of that rune powder, and instead of blowing up a quarter of the city, just blow up his. Oh, she is. Uh, she is fanatical, and she is convinced that she needs to actually blow up half the city in order to get enough attention and and, and get people on board on the resistance. She thinks that a small assassination attempt is not going to do anything. People are just going to Yeah, up. but then blowing up half the city, that goes from an assassination to an act of terrorism. Yeah, genocide. Yeah, I, I, she, I, does, she doesn't recognize that. She doesn't really recognize that. You can tell that she's kind of lost it mentally. 
<laughs> and she's uh, obsessed and she's going to go through with this plan. So, so it's, it's up to you guys to decide if you want to help her or stop her. And you could just could just could just have people spread word that the resistance is just a bunch of terrorists that are just running around killing people. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> no, because this we're kind of resistance. <laughs> this is they. I don't think that's a good idea. They already they already dislike the the terrorists and have wanted posters up about them and. They have wanted I mean, posters of vaguely describing you guys when you broke know, Jagger my, out. Yeah. Well, the only one they can actually identify was Tiny, and and maybe once that turtle got uh, released from his coffin, um, he was able to identify the other two that you were involved in this. <laughs> it was pretty dark. He really couldn't see our faces. We're good. Yeah, I mean, the, the descriptions are vague. It says, like, um, um, be on the lookout for a dwarf and a gnome. And it's kind of... That's about as much as he can uh, describe. And be on the lookout for a cat who is a terrorist who's rescuing fugitives. Yeah, and there's plenty of tabaxi in the town as slaves, so it's not like, you know, you're the only one. So yeah. if they're vague descriptions. You don't have anybody um, knocking on the door looking for you yet. Okay, Dorlak, what's... I mean, we heard other guys opinions so you uh well, right now I mean, we i think we're on a split decision we have two for and two against right yeah i mean since i mean since we're kind of in the past we're going to affect the future well think of it this way we're but, trying to get into the doom vault would getting that tam's attention be a good idea well yeah get away from the doom vault which is not in the new And we're only really... But I mean, that to get... Well, anyway, his attention would be on this city other than anywhere else. I don't think we want that much attention to be... Well, we're not, we're going to leave this city. What's your, what's your alternative, Tolan? Well, remember, we also know the future, and we know there wasn't a big old explosion. Well, yeah, but the future can change. We've changed the future, well, not necessarily us, but the future's been changed many times. When we go into the history of Fodge and do different things, we change the future. I understand that. I mean, well, and what's your alternative? We, we, haven't, I'm done asking, that. we, haven't, I, we haven't done that. I'm asking. I... I don't have a problem with following through with an assassination attempt. I just think killing all the innocent people is an unattempted. Well, I know, but how? You, what's how are you going to do it? Yeah, the problem is this. The problem is Gaffna is obsessed with actually causing this explosion, even more so than the assassination itself. I mean, if you really look at her, I mean, she. She's off. She, she looks nice. What's, what's the <laughs> she, she, what point of this? Is she's she, not looking. <laughs> uh, the the issue is, is that she's gone fanatical. She's gone fanatical. Yeah. She's lost it. And the whole uh, country's fanatical. Yeah, and, she and just plans of, on blowing up the city when. Well, it's not going to be the whole city. And uh, many of the, her resistance fighters, like Jigor, um, don't even want to go through with this. But it seems like she is, uh, she's the leader. She's the inspiration for everybody. It's, and it's hard for anybody to question her. I think what we need to do is we have time. We have to come up with a plan to... You have, plan you have three days. Yeah, we got... We need to come up with a plan to not destroy the city. That is just too ridiculous. Well, it's not re destroying the whole city. It's destroying a, a block. They're destroying the city and killing lots of innocent people. Uh, the this uh this kind of explosion will destroy one fourth the city. It will cause a crater, mm -hmm. as if a meteor hit the city and a fourth of the city will be gone. Ev anything that's there doesn't matter how powerful you are of a red wizard. You're you're dead. Uh, this will disintegrate you. So Question. not only even after you put the uh, uh, put the munitions and and set, light the fuse, you have to get the hell out of there quick, or else you're gonna be caught in the blast yourselves. That's what I was gonna say. Like, 
like she uh, where... Ga Gaffna laid out a plan where they have horses. Uh, so what happens is uh, they're gonna the minute that uh, because she knows how long it's gonna take exactly for the Tharkion's carriage to get to that spot. So the minute she sees Tharkion's car uh, carriage in range, she's going to uh, there. Uh, they're, they're your, the agents, uh, and you're going to be there as well. You're going to light the fuse, and then you're going to get on the horses hidden behind the hills, and you're going to dash. And uh, by the time the explosion goes off, you should be clear of the city. I mean, there, you, you heard her. This is ridiculous. I, I it's... it's... We have to come up with a different plan. Well, I'm willing to listen to plans, but... Well, I mean, the only thing is, okay, we stop her, we let her not do that, then we lose our help. If it's legitimate of getting to... What's her name? Sonar? Sirena. Sirena. Yes, she's uh, sent a sent... She has a sent, already sent a message on your behalf to Sirena. And is Allegedly. For waiting for waiting for reply yes well i i hope i'm hoping that we hear from sarana in the next day and they can make make adjustments to this plan i you wait a day and uh sarana has not returned any messages or at least gaffna has, has not told you that she's returned any messages well can we get a message to uh i can never remember his name but the the uh, guy in the government that's uh Kind of back, backing us to let him know what. No, Rouge. Yeah, well, whatever his name is, I can't remember. I'm looking at all my notes, but I can't. Uh, I well, you don't have a direct connection to him, but you do have papers that say you are you are operating on his behalf. You can go to his uh, his home. Why don't we do that? All right, very well. Uh, so the next day, would you like to go to see Narush? I mean, is that all right with everybody else, or? Sure. Yeah. I, I kind of want to see what his side of this plan is. Yeah, I mean, that's let him know what maybe he don't know that she's using a whole barrel of mega gun power. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so the next day, you guys uh, using the papers that you that you have uh, go back to the nobles quarter and you you identify where Narush lives. Uh, he has a, a state as well, not as opulent as the one you visited. You guys are allowed in because you have the papers that he personally uh, has stamped, and uh, you, you're you're allowed into the drawing room. And Narush uh, steps out, uh, this gentleman, and he says, "I thought I told Sir. I thought I told Gaffna, never come here personally." He says, "You're putting me at great risk. What is it that you need?" But well, we really came on our own, own accord. Uh, Gaffna doesn't know we came here. But uh, do you actually know her plan? Of course I do. Well, tell us point. what you know of her plan. He says Gaffna will send a message that will ring throughout the lands of Fae that the reign of the Red Wizards is over. And you realize his plan is leveling a quarter of the city? He says, you, he says, you have to have the vision. He says, I too do not wish to kill that many people, but without death, there can be no rebirth. Uh, you can, you, you, you tell just, that your Rush is a convert as well to Gaffna's uh, fanaticism. May, may you talk her into making the explosion a little smaller? He says, but he says, you have to trust Gaffna. She's the one who started the rebellion, and she's the one who led it to glorious victory. True, but how many of, I mean, considering all the things you're going to be killing, what is, their, what is their opinion of your rebellion going to be then? He says, yes, people will die, but people die every day in Thay. Slaves are killed, slaughtered, for no reason that they looked at someone wrong. Death is not something that is foreign to us, and it's something that we need to spawn our rage and hatred. People are asleep, and you can see he gets a little fanatical himself, and he points at you, he's like, people are here in this town are asleep. They do not even recognize how oppressed they are anymore. We need to wake them up. You're breaking up. You're gone. Oh. 
Breaking up is hard to do. <laughs> he says people are people are in just this 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 complacent torpor. They're asleep, and we need to wake them up. So, I think by blowing up half the city isn't going to stop you slavery. Think- so everything's still going to be the same. It's just. You're getting rid of one tyrant. He says you need to have the vision. Gaffna has the vision. Yeah. And I trust her. <laughs> you you know what the, the vision should be. The vision should be the strength of the resistance. And the strength of the resistance should be showing that hey. Uh roll a insight can... uh roll a insight check on your Roosh. <laughs> Whoever's got the highest insight insight. Oh. Um Very. I just have a plus four. I got plus five. Now I got plus three. Tolan? I am there. As you're talking to Nyarush, you start recognizing that uh, he's his his eyes are flinching, his hands are kind of quivering a little bit as he's talking to you. Uh, he uh, he something dishonest is going on, like something he's not letting on. And uh, he uh, whatever he uh, he's he, when he's talking to you, he's talking like he's completely hundred percent in support of Gaffna, but you realize that he has some other intentions or some other thoughts. What's Gaffna holding over your head? Uh, he, 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 he looks at you. He's like, that's none of your business. He says, he says, but what I want to know is if you're going to interfere with her plans. And he, uh, uh, he, uh, he kind of, uh, he starts looking around his parlor. He looks. Uh, he looks at the bookshelves to the left and bookshelves to the right. What are you looking for? Shelves. He says nothing. Nothing. He says, "Well, what is it? Are you going to stop her?" We're trying to come up with an alternate way to handle this without so much death. As he's looking at the bookshelves, can I roll a perception? Yeah, you can roll a perception uh, at just what he's see, looking at. Just to see if he's looking for anything in particular at the bookshelves. Should I go ahead and roll it? Yeah, go ahead. You don't see anything in particular that he's looking at. They just look like standard bookshelves. Stock, stocked with like uh, uh, fiction, historical fiction and stuff, romance novels, whatever. <laughs> the tiny marble. Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, you uh, uh, you're you're subtly getting a hint that uh, Nyarush has some sort of ul- ulterior motive that he's absolutely not interested in sharing with you. Even though um, uh, uh, up front he's one hundred percent in support of Gaffna's insane plan. All right, tiny marble cakes will pipe up and say, well, "If they actually do this, they'll just they'll kill the, they'll kill this Tharkian, but then meow meow they'll would the king just replace him with another tyrant meow meow." And Nyaru- would that tyrant be you, possibly? Nyarush uh, smiles for a second, almost imperceptibly. He says, who knows what Zaisam will do. I think you guys so have you figured it out. Um, uh, Tiny, to some inspiration, you just figured out his uh, his little plot. Yeah, because I'm thinking both in and out of game, it's like, well, if they assassinate this guy... Zostam's not gonna care. He'll just replace this guy before. His because body uh, even- you guys know that Yerush, uh he has been putting out a a, fr- uh, a a an appearance to everyone that he is extremely hard on the resistance, and people like him for mm-hmm. that. 
So I, you've just figured out that if uh, once uh, Halakun gets assassinated, Nyarush will be the next Tharkion. But the question is, is Nyarush going to be a good Tharkion or is he going to be just as bad as the old one? I know such thing as a good Tharkion. I was going to say, he's already showing deception to the people that he's on their side when he's trying to basically overthrow yeah. the government himself. So, Nonchalantly through Gaffner, so he doesn't seem very. A, you you don't get the but, you don't get the vibes that he's trustworthy and he's a good guy just from the from the from the little that you've been talking to him at this point. He says this attack, this is an assassination, and this uh, you know he says this uh, this event will take place. No one will stop it, and he looks at you intently. Fair enough. What's in it for you if uh, we don't stop it? We could make enough noise to probably ruin their chances. We know what the plan is. We know the whole plan. He says, I warn you of talking of such dangerous actions. You have to understand where you are and who holds the power here. Yeah, I do understand he kind that. Of, he, kind of, asking... he says in a threatening tone. I'm just asking what's in it for us. Is there any way you can help us to earn our backs on this uh, situation? Uh, and he looks at you and says, interesting. Make, uh, tell, me, tell me what you suggest. We would like to um, be able to get a hold of a certain personage. Uh, just to talk. To talk. I can introduce mm -hmm. you to I. Uh, w if I become Tharkion after this event, I will be powerful enough to introduce you to Zaztam himself. Well, I mean, we don't hold many cards if the event already has taken place. Ooh, but if you can introduce us to, I'm saying this out of game, out of character. Um, if he introduces us to Zaztam. Uh, you don't want to be introduced as us. No, I don't want to be introduced. I don't want to be introduced. <laughs> Elminster has warned you heavily against uh, 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 really. I was thinking more on the lines of him getting yeah. a hold of uh, the Red Wizard. We're trying to get a hold of. Well, what's your proposal to him, though? Because he uh, he needs this to happen so he can become the Tharkia. Well. <laughs> We need to get a hold of a certain red wizard. Go on, he says. We need to talk to, what's her name? Sirana. Zorana. Zorana. Um, we have some important, we have some, uh, an important message to give to her from a really, really close person to her. He, he looks at you and he says, I may be able to range something such as that but what is it what in it for me well what's in it for you is is perhaps we'll just uh leave this city and what will be will be he, he says and what if i decide that i will not help you and that i will alert the red wizards that you are fumbling in their plans wouldn't they, Red Wizard, be able to get out of us that uh, there was a plot uh, and then you were involved in that plot? And don't the Red Wizards, Wizards have a way to do that? Well, they'll, the, the, they probably would be more interested in disintegrating you or feeding you to the slave pens. Yeah, uh, well, I, I doubt mean... that anything you say will hold much merit against my word. For I, you know, she, she says, I am the authority on prosecuting the resistance. Eh, the Red Wizards are a little bit more powerful than you, though. He says, there, there is power in terms of your spell slots, and then there is true power. And he slams his mm -hmm. fist on the table. And Red Wizards are kind of at the top of the pyramid, aren't they? <laughs> and they... They think they are, yes. Well, <laughs> well, if you went against them, how would you fare? He says, uh, he says, I have no reason to go against red wizards. They have always been on my side. 
I know, but if they found out you were making this kind of plot to destroy this much of the city, they probably wouldn't be on your side so much anymore. I doubt that they'll find out. He, uh, he, uh, he kind of looks at you, uh, is uh, kind of uh, assessing you, uh, the four of you, as a threat because of you, know, because you brought up the possibility of uh, of uh, exposing their plot. Uh, you, uh, he, things are looking kind of hostile right now. Well, we are kind of a threat, yeah, but he's kind of a threat to us too. Come on, tolling you as one. Well, I think, I think uh, we we got the. Uh... We can confirm and, and make Captain happy, uh, letting him know that we kind of tested Narush's, uh, uh, I mean, tested Narush to make sure he was still on board with the plan, and, uh, we'll be all set. And we can yeah. back and So what do you say, what do you say to Narush now that you've spooked him <laughs> before you leave? Well, he was saying that so he could hear him, I'm assuming. Yeah. That we're just testing him. Okay, yeah, uh, we're just testing him uh, I need, sure I need that. a deception on that. Make sure that uh, you're not going to Nyaru because Nyarush is suspicious. Make sure that he's not going to be. Then I want to uh, take an action um, against you. I want a subtle cast uh, um, guidance. Okay. Well, you put a guidance on him. Uh, let's see. This is for Tolan. There you go. I'm gonna say, can I use the help action on it? I will use an inspiration to. All right. Get advantage. You can use a help action, just describe how you're helping, but if he's using inspiration, it doesn't matter. Yeah, then I won't bother. Uh, you can see that Yerusha's features ease a little bit once you say this. He says, he says, like I said, ne we do not come to my place. We apologize, and uh, we'll head back, and we're definitely going to help. The, we actually agree that this uh, plan should go down, and we're actually going to help uh, see that it does. Uh, he still eyes you somewhat suspiciously, but he doesn't look as threatening as he was before. Yeah, I guess we leave. That's kind of what Tolan's getting at. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you guys kind of uh, head off of his place. You guys uh, kind, uh, realize that he's not that much of a help. It doesn't seem like he's that good of a person himself. That did not go exactly like I hoped. But at least we know what he's up to. Well, Tolan, you just need to go tell her that uh, he's got some kind of ulterior motive. Maybe we can pit him against each other in a way. She probably knows. Question is, is this a state anywhere near where the explosion is going to happen? His state well, will actually. He's be, not worried about it. <laughs> his estate will be destroyed with the explosion. Oh. But it appear, appear, it, he obviously he knows this, and he's probably well prepared for this. He probably will not be anywhere near the city at the time. Well, he's probably counting on it that way. You know, he, luckily he saved, and you know. Well, that would make him look better. I mean, less. I mean, there wouldn't be no suspicion on him if his own estate was destroyed. Right. It? But it'd be suspicion that you would be down around when this type of thing happens. But, uh. I mean, I don't think Gavna needs to know that we went and talked to him. And let her, let, her, let her know that we just tried to figure out and, and all that type of stuff. Well, you know, it's, uh. It's about 10 tool. Could we yeah. just go ahead and take yes. a break and give us a week to think about this? <laughs> Absolutely. We can uh, continue this next time. You guys can kind of uh, mull over what you want to do.